Well, I want to welcome everybody to our meeting tonight. We have a couple people I want to introduce you to. Uh, first up, Alan Chankter is from Mid-Atlantic Rhea. That's in Baltimore. Um, what do you do, Alan? I believe you're a full-time real estate investor. Yes, a full-time wholesaler. I do, I've done everything else, but felt like um, after many years of frustration that wholesaling works best for me, my lifestyle, and so forth. In any case, full-time wholesaler here in the Baltimore, D.C. area. So you can give us a lot of good questions on Deal Machine from the wholesaler's perspective. Well, I haven't used it yet myself, and I'm here to learn like everybody else. Uh, me too. I've wholesaled a little bit, and I'm I'm actually out there marketing for buy and hold. So this is right up my alley as well. And I want to welcome Matt Kemp from St. Louis and Deal Machine. Tell us a little bit about Matt. I went online, and it, all your bio said that you work for Deal Machine, but they didn't really give me the rest of your bio. And I know there's a lot more to it than just Deal Machine. So I'll let you tell us a little bit about you, mm -hmm. about Deal Machine, and then our challenge. Sure. I'm in Kansas City all the time. Times I mentioned to you, Kim, as well. Uh, definitely, uh, you know, a lot of Chiefs fans over here in St. Louis now that we don't have the Rams. So uh, I can <laughs> at least relate on that, too. But uh, well, welcome, everybody. Really, really excited to be doing this, uh, doing the challenge with you guys. I know we're like, you know, uh, Kim and Alan have both mentioned we're going to have uh, Deal Machine as a part of this challenge, but definitely not the, uh, you know, the, uh, the only focus of this thing. Like, you know, it's going to be using deal machine as part of the, how to execute on this stuff. But really the, the main goal is to help you come out of this with the playbook that we've seen work time and time and time again. Um, my background, uh, you know, as Kim had asked there, I'm based in St. Louis. I'm primarily wholesaling here, but doing some, some kind of flip, you know, smaller scale flips, I would say, uh, you know, as of late, uh, you know, as of uh, this year as well, I had, had a background within, uh, you know, real estate here, but then also uh, marketing, entrepreneurship in general, um, you know, really just kind of a entrepreneurial uh, uh, mind over here. And then, um, you know, the deal machine guys, I'll, I'll tell David Leko's story, our original uh, CEO and co-founder, um, but he's somebody I've known forever, a past business partner of mine as well. So, uh, you know, but love to join the, I uh, joined the deal machine team four or five years ago. It's been, a, been an awesome ride. Really, really enjoy this and, and really love these challenges too, because our, you know, in the end, like we're, we're just a tool to help you be more successful, but it, it takes you going out there and taking action and, and having this knowledge and having a community like you do on, on these calls, right. To be able to go and fall back on and hold each other accountable. And you'll see within the challenge itself, you know, not only are we going to be training you, but we're going to be including all kinds of fun stuff, prizes, you know, homework to qualify for those prizes. We're giving away a couple, like literally to over $2,500 worth of free stuff to the people that that participate in this challenge. So, you know, not, not only is it, you know, the knowledge piece and, and the real prizes go and doing deals, right? Which was amazing that Matt already, you know, we're what, four minutes in and he already said he did a deal <laughs> today, which is pretty awesome. That's the real end goal is the the uh, going out there and doing off-market deals. We want to be a tool to help you enable that success, but um, otherwise, hey, we're going to have fun along the way too. So um, Kim, is there anything else you wanted to touch on before we really uh, start to dive into this? I, I'm really looking forward to this because I've tried a lot of I mean, I, I go out and do the driving for dollars thing, driving around and writing down all the addresses. Yep. And then I come home with the best of intentions. And then I find my list sitting in a pile like a month later going, oh, I never did get that done. Or I'm going to go out and go driving for dollars because I found I want to do this, but I don't know my route to get between the houses. So I've some of the previews you showed us this week, I'm really anxious to learn how to use all of this because I think it might solve some of my procrastination problems. Kim, I'm right there with you. I've done the same thing in years past. I've gone around. I I, I used to, um, I, I handled the Baltimore and DC markets. I've driven around, somebody in the car with me, and then we're writing down all the addresses. We get home, we put them in a pile, and then we never get back to actually putting them in the computer to do anything. So um, I'm right there with you. So yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, you guys are definitely not alone. As you as you'll see when I get to uh, kind of a little bit of background on Deal Machine right here, that's that's where really where it started. Like the idea of driving around and looking for properties that need fix, looking for those fixer uppers, like driving for dollars, driving for deals. Like we did not come up with that. That has been around for a long time, and our goal was to to give you a tool 
to make that way more manageable, way more effective, way more efficient. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll get into that here too. So, uh, welcome everybody. It, it helps me if, uh, if you don't, uh, if you don't mind to kind of start off with, uh, jump in the chat, let me know, uh, one where you're based out of, you know, I know we've got probably some, a decent amount of KC and Baltimore people, but I'd, I'd love to know that. Uh, and then two, uh, in addition to that, if you could also include where you're at in your real estate investing journey, have you done deals? You know, in, in Matt's case, I know you you have done at least one. <laughs> you were on today, uh, but you know, if you have you done any deals? Are you working on your first deal? Kind of let me know where you're at in that real estate investing journey. Um, Kim, as we go through this as well, too, if you don't mind checking if the, the Facebook group, uh, you know, if, if we're uh, able to like get questions from that as well, I'm always happy to uh, yield that too. But I, uh, I will be trying to watch Facebook, but it is I do have it posted in several places on Facebook. So I will try to keep tra tabs of it. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. If it, just, just uh, feel free to, you know, uh, unmute and jump in if you, if you see anything good there. So Perfect. Um, awesome. Cool guys. So uh, fantastic. Let's see. I appreciate everybody jumping in and uh, I love <laughs> uh, Desmona says I do the same. Yep. I, you're not, you're not alone here. Uh, let's see. Kim Tucker, lots of deals. Yep. Uh, looking for your first deal. Ir Irma. Awesome. Welcome. So um, we designed this really for no matter where you're at in your real estate journey, whether you're trying to find that first deal, whether you have done a hundred deals and you're looking for a new way or an additional way, or maybe a, a way that's going to save you a lot of time and really help you get more focused. Um, this is a great opportunity to do that. Uh, this, this challenge we've designed from on, from our perspective on the deal machine front, we've had over 10,000 deals done. Now we hit that number last year, so I need to update that, but over 10,000 deals done using deal machine. And that is the data, again, whether you're using deal machine or not, that is the data that we're looking at to really understand what is working for people in today's market. In every state, we've had deals done in, in rural and urban settings and, you know, really dense populations or not. Like, you know, we we want to give you that playbook and that's what we're going to be breaking down over these seven days. Now is the time to step up and take action. Like this is a, especially this time of year, there are so many people who I mean, I know it's, I can't believe it. It's almost November. It's, but, you know, we're, we're coming up on the end of the year. Now can be seen traditionally as maybe a slower time. A lot of people mail it in from here and just kind of start shutting down. This is a great time to step up and stand out in your market and really get a jump on the next year. And if you can build great systems and processes right now and start to get out there and really get ahead of it and really be a resource when people are out there and need a resource at this time of year, it's, it can be really tough. It can be a, a time that people need some help in a variety of different ways. And if we can be that resource for them, hey, you're already you're you're, you're standing out. You've got more of an opportunity now than than any time in in uh, in your year. And then again, you're gonna the way that you end this year really sets the tone for what you're gonna do next year. So. That is our goal with these seven days and why now is such an awesome time to be be doing this together. Um, where most investors that would, you know, or I guess would be investors where most newbies don't get uh, really get tripped up and don't get started is they still know how to go out there and find that great deal. And especially in today's market, it's they don't know where you know, the process they don't know. Uh, you know, they can't, it's, it's a knowledge issue. And then also an execution issue of, okay, great. Let me, now that I know what to do, how do I actually do this in a manageable, reasonable, real way? Um, that is what we want to solve for you guys here is over those next seven days, we want to teach you that playbook, give you the step-by-step, -step, not hypotheticals, but show you exactly what to do on, on each of these days here. So, um, really use this as a chance to just transform your financial life. Like we've had people jump into this who've literally Mark right here. This was earlier in March, uh, a challenge we did. He said, he literally said as a, uh, after this challenge, it has transformed my life in a positive way. I want to thank you for a memory that'll last a lifetime. And the reason why we had such an impact on him is one, he took it serious, but then t and, and followed up and followed through and, and, and used this as a chance to get out there and go start doing deals. But then two, he even incorporated his family into this. Like he had a son that he helped inspire to get into real estate by jumping into this challenge and going headfirst into it and, and saying, hey, this is my chance, this is my opportunity, like better now, you know, better now you know, than, than waiting and saying someday, like someday never comes. It's never convenient to go do this. It's, a, it's just a time of getting out there and making it happen. So um, Mark was somebody who went out there and did that. Jared was another one who said, hey, if it wasn't for this challenge, 
you know, that whole someday thing, I don't think I'd ever get on the horse and take action. Like that, that is our goal is to give you these action steps and make it manageable and, and make it fun along the way. And then Santiago was the last one that said, this challenge has helped me understand anything's possible as long as you take small, consistent actions daily. And you'll find that out over these seven days that if you can be disciplined about it, if you can go out there, do the homework that, that we're going to assign by the end of this thing. And really, again, you know, commit and go for this. Like you are in a, in a spot that other people are not willing to do. People fall off and most people would listen to this and be like, great, this sounds, you know, in, in, in theory, this sounds great. Someday I'll do this. Awesome. Great. Maybe take a few notes and then not revisit it. We want you guys to lead with action, lead by doing and get out there and, and use this as your chance to step up. So uh, David was somebody again, our, our CEO and co-founder who did not, again, not, did not invent driving for dollars, did not invent driving for deals like this, did not invent this method of getting out there and, and trying to identify rundown houses and reach out to those sellers directly and do deals that way. But he was somebody who had a technology background and said, there's got to be a better way. And what he did is he was in St. Louis with me. Uh, I grew up with him. I've known him forever. Like I mentioned, we've, you know, he's a very entrepreneurial guy. I've done past business pitches and things like that with him before. It's been, uh, you know, I'm definitely always uh, admired the guy and, and knew he was super talented. Um, he had a tech job here in St. Louis previously. And, you know, when he moved to Indianapolis for that job, he ended up going there and again, working in tech really was burning himself out on his nine to five. And, it was, you know, more of a 24 seven, really. Like it was, he was never turned off. He did not like that lifestyle. He, you know, was new to the Indianapolis market and said, Hey, this could be a good opportunity to kind of start fresh a little bit. And so he had read rich dad, poor dad. He had, which put in the chat, if you've done that, I know that's <laughs> most people that, that a lot of times that's, that's their, uh, you know, their inspiration point here. Uh, <clears throat> four hour work week. He'd also read that he knew, you know, hey, there's a the idea of startups and entrepreneurship and all that were very appealing to him. And he said, you know what, I, I have this this real estate thing that I know is the greatest generator of wealth ever created. I, I need to be getting into this. I can change my my life like this. I can change my lifestyle like this. And so he would go to RIA meetings. He'd go to you know local groups in Indianapolis and ask people, how did you go find your first deal? How did you get into real estate? What should I be doing? The thing he heard over and over and over again, the most common thing was, hey, I did my first deal by doing this thing called driving for dollars or driving for deals. So, you know, interchangeable. It's, again, the idea of getting in your car, driving around, looking for fixer uppers, writing those down, and then figuring out how to get in touch with that owner, asking if they're looking to sell. As simple as that. And let me let me see the chat here. We had a few, quite a few people. Yeah, I, th I think everyone, <laughs> everyone I think has read that. I'm, I'm with you, Kim. I, I, read, I know I read it in high school, and that was my original inspiration for uh, wanting to get into real estate too. So, uh, rich dad, by the way. Uh, so, David would get in his car. He'd start driving around. He'd find houses like this. He'd write down, you know, fourteen thirty three right here on his little notebook. Um, he'd keep driving around, keep looking for these houses. And, you know, he, he knew that this was actually an awesome way to find opportunities that are hidden, that other people aren't finding that, um, are the most motivated sellers in your market. Uh, but he just would go do this and it would take so much time. He'd be going in circles because he would write down an address and then go back and look at his list and realize I've written this address four times already. Like I'm, I'm literally just doubling back on routes I've already been to or, and you know, he'd write them down. And then just like Kim had said, he would not follow up. He may, even, even if he did follow up, he would take all this time just writing one letter, mailing it off and being like, Hey, great. Now I'm going to do a deal. This is perfect. Is <laughs> it's, it works just like that. It's magic, right? Uh, it does not work that way. And he would market to them one time, sit back and wait for the opportunities. And six months, a year later, he'd drive past this house and it looked like this. And he'd be like, what happened? I, I had the right lead. I did everything else right. Why didn't I get this deal? Why didn't they call me? And so he realized, man, there's two main things here. One, I'm finding great opportunities. The best deals come when you go off market and go direct to seller like this. But I need a system to identify more of those, enough of them, and actually not just write down the address, but get in touch with that person to actually talk with them and figure out, hey, what problem can I solve for them? How can I be a resource for them? How can I do a deal that, how can I buy right by going directly to them? Um, 
that you find somebody who's looking to sell and wants to move quickly and will, you know, is willing to make that win-win where it works for your numbers and it works for them because you're helping them move quickly and conveniently and you're giving them the easy button, right? So for him, he knew these two lessons. He learned that the hard way himself. And he said, you know what? I'm a tech guy. Why don't I make this little app to help me out? And so this is a very, you'd probably be embarrassed if you knew I was showing this screenshot, but it's a very ugly first version of Deal, Deal Machine, of the mobile app that he solved his own problem with. He built an app that he could just take down addresses easily and then send out mail and make sure that it repeats sends to that person. Matt, so I'm not sure if you were aware of it, but we can't see. Um, if you're putting slides up, we're not seeing them. Oh, can you guys, can, Kim, can you see them? Oh, you're on mute. I've got yes, we can see. Oh, I'm, I guess, I don't know. I'm not seeing any slides. Oh. So um, maybe it's just me. Okay, if everybody else can see them, that's fine. Okay, sorry. Yeah, you're good. I think if you there's, there might be like a screen you need to click on in Zoom, possibly that. Uh, yeah, you're you might be on the uh, um the all people. What is it? The gallery. Okay, you need to switch to the other. There you go. There we go. Luckily, I haven't had any like any of the demo or anything yet. So if we haven't we're, got we're, there. We're getting there. We're getting there. Just want to give you guys that background. So. Um, I love uh, Kim saying uh, one letter does not a deal make. Absolutely. <laughs> Damn Reedy bought it. That's funny. Uh, I've gone walking for dollars quite a few times. Yep. I, I There we go. I love it. Again, not a new method. Um, but what he what he did create was this little app here that was just solving his own problem. This was like 2016, 2015, 16, um, where, again, you could just add addresses and then send out mail and let it automatically repeat send to them. And just those two little things of adding more leads, sending it mail out more more often like that, added up to some huge, huge wins. He would go out there and he'd have houses like this, 7132 Grandview, where he, you know, bought it for at a big discount, renovated it, did the Burr method here, you know, ended up doing a, a as great monthly cash flow from this. Current value and equity, fantastic right now. Um, here's what it looks like now. That was what you know, here's what he looked like when he bought it. Here's where we're, what we're looking at now. Then same block there, 7144 Grandview, same idea, cash out refi, did the month, uh, has great uh, monthly income from it, current value and equity right there. That's what it used to look like. And here's what you're looking at here. So he started to use this for himself, do this over and over again himself. He built his own financial freedom this way, has 19 properties now in Indianapolis, uh, you know, almost $4 million in value, almost half of that in equity. Great monthly cash flow from all that really built his own financial freedom doing this exact method and then had people start coming to him and saying, "How, David, I want to use whatever you made like that, that little thing that's in you know, on your on your phone. Can I I will pay you to use that. And he realized, man, I this might be a real business here. <laughs> this might, might be onto something. And so that's where Deal Machine was born. And the mission from that, that entire experience was to give everyone the power of real estate investing to go out there and to give you, again, so, uh, access to data, access to marketing that previously would only be for huge companies that invest in, in real estate at, at large scales and make it actually manageable and doable for the everyday investor. Um, and so that was kind of the initial mission and why he built Deal Machine, why he got that out there to not just solve his own problem, but help others get out there and do their first deal and do their first hundred deals. You know, even, even if you're a more advanced investor, help you really build this into your, your repertoire, into your, into your, uh, you know, tool belt here. And so since he's done that in 2016, we are now really proud to say we're the highest rated and most reviewed app out there for, for doing off market deals like this. Um, we we have, I know that, I need to update that number. It's over 100,000 investors served now, 10,000 plus deals done, like I mentioned, in every single state, 4.8 4. or 4.9, depending upon the day, out of five with over 5,000 reviews between Android and mobile or in, uh, and Apple. So um, that's really where this came from. Ryan's a, a great example here of somebody who went through a 30-day version of this um, back in 2020. Day 17, he did his first deal and he came into this, no real estate experience, was just trying to learn this thing. Day 17 did his first deal. 70, 72 deals later, he had been using Deal Machine for about a year. He's done over 400 deals using, again, this exact playbook um, over the last four years. So 100 plus deals per year. Um, in the Actually in the Kansas City, like in the St. Joe area. Um, so not too far from you, Kim. Well, that, that's amazing because St. Joe is a very small market. 
Yeah, he's him and his wife, I think, I mean, are by far the the largest operation there, I believe. So, um, yeah, he Ryan, Ryan's awesome. He, he helps lead our, our podcast now because he had such a great experience. Um, so he's somebody who went through a challenge like this. And then we have people like Patrick Martin here, too, who he literally said he was sleeping in his truck, trying to figure out what to do and really how to change his situation in life. And through YouTube and just him going out there and determination, taught himself kind of that YouTube university of real estate investing, found Deal Machines channel, got out there, started doing what we were putting out there um, in 10 months, did 14 deals and 150K in wholesale fees and changed his life like that. And so this is why we do it. Like this is what, what we get really, really excited about is helping out individuals no matter what their background is. Um, Patrick in South Carolina, you know, uh, uh, Ryan in, in in the KC area, you know, St. Joe. Um, and, you know, we that's really what we're pulling this from. So these next seven days, guys, you're going to have three live trainings. So using this playbook, using what we what Patrick's done, what Ryan's done, what, you know, hundreds of YouTube interviews that we've gone through on our channel talking about deals they've broken down. That is through the, you know, these live trainings are going to be all about this step-by-step playbook. So we have tonight going on. We have Monday for uh, the second live training. And tonight, again, we're going to get homework each time. So tonight, we got the first one. The first, Really, tonight's going to be really focused on identifying motivated sellers. Uh, Monday is going to really dig into the marketing strategy. So what do you do with that list? How do you turn that list of addresses into real opportunities, into, into conversations. And, and then Wednesday is how do you turn them into deals? It's talking about making offers and, and closing the deal there. So uh, make sure it's, it's going to be the same Zoom line, right, Kim, you said? Um, yes. Awesome. Cool. So same time, same Zoom line. We want to keep it real easy for you guys to be able to do all this. Um, and just, you know, so bookmark that in your, in your guys' uh, calendars, right? You know, right now, if you can. So tonight, Monday, Wednesday. So um, I, think I set it up right. Zoom will remind you, but yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I did it right or not. Awesome. There, you know what? I'll. Uh, I, I think you know. I, I know I'm registered for it. So I, I'll double check if I, you know, if it didn't, uh, you know, hit my inbox right away for whatever reason. But okay, just perfect. regardless, Monday, Wednesday, or Monday, Wednesday next week is what you want to make sure you bookmark. Um, each of these nights, we're giving you that playbook. Like I mentioned, we're going to help you overcome challenges. So feel free to put questions in the chat. We'll try to really be active there. I um, want to keep it interactive and make sure you guys feel great coming out of this. And then at the end of this thing, we're going to sign homework and hold you accountable. So if you turn in the homework, that is a, a lottery ticket here. You're going to be able to get a chance at winning the grand prize. And, you know, especially, I mean, we've got like a, you know, a nice, nice small group here. Like it's a great, great to have this kind of like personal one-to-one -one opportunity. And, and that means that one of you guys on here is going to be winning that prize. Like you've got all you got to do is take that action, lead with action, really commit over these seven days and and not just say the some, you know, someday I'll get into this. But right now I'm going to follow this and use this as my chance to give this a real shot. And so that's our goal over these seven days with these these live trainings, giving you that homework throughout all of this. Um, and the grand prize is going to be over, worth over twenty five hundred bucks for somebody to win this, too. So um, awesome. all you got to do is complete that homework. All right. Kim, is there anything uh, you wanted to add to that or, or talk about like why now is such a great time to be getting into this too? And well, well, we Personally, I think right now is a great time. Um, we have the election coming up, what, in seven days or whatever. And the whole market is, mm -hmm. I think, going to open up after that because I've, I've been really? in this industry for a while and I've learned that two months before a presidential election, business just almost comes to a screeching halt. And then the day after it's over, everybody goes crazy and goes back to work. And so yeah. getting into this, getting it, starting to get your marketing, learning how to do it. When you hit, I mean, you can do a deal before the end of the year, which is awesome, but you can also hit the ground running in January. So you can get all the, the jitters and the bugs work and then, you know, just go to town hitting, hitting the market uh, in January. The other thing I have found uh, over the years is doing don't just discount doing marketing during december because you're like oh it's christmas nobody's going to want to sell their house whatever there's a lot of people that want i have a property they don't want and they want it off the books before the end of the year so december yep. can be an awesome or time to market because there's people they they don't want to own it next year mm -hmm. or you know they sit down at thanksgiving dinner what are we going to do with grandma's house and mm -hmm. then they get your letter or whatever marketing you're sending to them 
and, and you can do a deal before the end of the year very easily. December, people sell houses. And they, want yeah. the, and they want the money to pay for the Christmas gifts, to pay back the credit cards in January. Yes. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That I mean, that is all a uh, very, very good point about the end of the year is one. You're going to stand out because, I, like I mentioned, a lot of people mail it in at that point. Um, you know, with the, a lot of our competitors you know, take vacation. Exactly. Exactly. People take off December. Um and then you're right with the election. It's just the uncertainty of it all. A lot of times is, is where people are, you know, they're like you said, business can be coming, can come to a street, screeching halt for a little bit here. Um, it's actually perfect timing with this challenge specifically as well, because Monday is again, going to be talking about the marketing, which means, Hey, if we, if we're going to do direct mail, for example, that's going to be hitting mailboxes right after the election's over. So that's actually perfect timing. So. What that's going to get you is you get seven days of deal machine free. So it coincides with the challenge. We, we don't ask for you to pay for anything during the challenge. We want to make it really easy for you to get out there and use the tool um, with this. It does require a credit card to start the, the uh, free trial. So just make sure you know that going in. But going into this, that's our goal is to give you all the free tool and everything you need to be able to go out there and execute on the stuff. It'll also give you through these two links, you'll get a ton of bonus credits as well to be able to send free marketing, such as direct mail, such as making phone calls, like you're, you're basically going to get all that covered for you free as well. So um, th that we want to make sure we set you guys up with as much of that as possible for free and ready to go. And uh, so save those links. Um, Kim, if you keep putting those in the chat for us, that'd be fantastic just to remind people. But um, that's especially if you're going to jump into the app while I'm doing this portion of the training, the demo portion, um, I would set that up now here for you. So yeah. Um, what I'll mention, and I hinted at this already, is day one. So this this first live training, which again, you got to show up on Monday, Monday night with the homework done to be able to kind of continue along the journey and, and again, qualify for the for the grand prize and follow the playbook and and do all the right things that we're, we're asking you to do here. Um, this first step is all about building that list of the most motivated sellers in your market by going out there and doing this driving for dollars, driving for deals approach. And really when we look out there and, and figure out like, hey, because Deal Machine, you've got hundreds, I mean, literally 700 plus data points you can be using to, to build lists and pull properties and things like that. But across the board, when we look at what are the best leads in your market, time and time again, just from a purely looking at the data, hands down, not even close, it's driving for dollars. And the reason being is that one, the mo the number one indicator, the most motivated sellers in your market, number one data point that would indicate that is the condition of the property, is the house that is in rough shape, that is, you know, it's a, a property that needs needs fixing up, it needs, uh, needs some TLC, and either that owner does not want to take care of it anymore, they can't take care of it anymore, they might be in a tough spot that you can help them with. Like there is the the leading indicator, the number one thing that you say, hey, the, the probability is the highest that this person is looking to sell sooner than later if they have a house in bad condition. And so that that's what we're looking for there. You know, that's the number one indicator. And then in addition to that, the number one uh, uh, way to find a lead that is the least competitive leads in your market is also this. Like it, they're not as competitive because it's not as easy to go out there and go drive. Like it takes some some grit. It takes some work. It takes some you know sweat equity, right, to go out there and build a list like this that no one else has. It's really easy to go and just pull a list of probate or a list of whatever and you know just be able to work that. This is going to take a lot more time, a lot more effort, a lot more, you know, get, you know, you getting out there and and identifying these houses one by one. And so because of those two things, the people who are willing to do the things that other people won't are going to find the, the, the great deals that other people don't. Right. Like you're finding those hidden opportunities here that don't necessarily show up on other lists from other data points. And so that's what we're looking at here is trying to help you identify those really high quality hidden hidden deals in your market. Um, when we look at the data as well, the number one kind of magic number or like goal, goal I would say to shoot for when we're doing this method is the number 100. 
And I'm not saying that, you know, if you have a hundred leads, you're guaranteed to do a deal. That's, you know, not, definitely not the case. Usually statistically, it's probably a couple times that to really, um, you know, guarantee that you're going to, that, that a deal's in your list size. Um, but what I can say is that the number 100, if you get to that, that list size, and, and we do have plenty of people, like literally there's a guy, uh, um, Quentin in San Antonio, the fourth lead he called is literally it's live on our YouTube. We, you can find the video. The fourth lead he called, he did a deal. It can happen. You can get lucky. Um, but if you want to have long-term sustained success and have the playbook that doesn't just get you one deal, but it gets you deal after deal, after deal, after deal, uh, hitting that n number 100. When we look at the data, that is really the turning point. That is where we see people building momentum, see people doing the right things, building the right systems and processes in place that just statistically, we it is way more predictable that they're going to do a deal because they're going to stick with this way beyond 100 once they hit that 100 lead threshold. So that is the first thing I always tell people is get to that threshold. You'll be in the top percent of people uh, when you do that, when you get to the you know 100 leads. And, uh, you know, and not just, you know, at, make a list of 100 leads, but actually actively reach out to them. So follow through with with the next, you know, the next training, right? Uh, get to that 100 number. And if you're actively marking you 100, we can tell you with very, uh, you know, very high confidence that you are statistically way more likely to keep going because you are building out your, that snowball method that that really like the, the build the, the momentum of getting out there and knowing what to do and building that confidence and getting the reps in. So that you'll, you'll see that with the homework here, that the number 100 is a really kind of special number of what we should be aiming for. The first thing we should be thinking about. Um, and you know, that's kind of the initial goal that we're going to be, be setting here. So I have this, the same thing when I teach a beginner class of the number 100, I'm like, analyze a hundred deals. You'll know what you're doing by the time you get to the end. Yep. <laughs> That's a great, yeah, great point. Is just getting the reps in, getting comfortable with that, and same goes for driving for dollars. Like it just holds true with with looking at that data, figuring out if we want to predict who's going to go do deals. Look for the people who have done at least hundred leads, and you know, there and there you go. Um, and you're right, you can't see a rundown house on the tax records easily. Good, great point. <laughs> great, to, great way to re reiterate that. So, um, what this looks like on how to get to those hundred leads. Let me kick over here. So. Um, I can, what I, what I'll show you guys is I'll, I'll share again, deal machine, the actual software itself. So make sure to go to those links that Kim keep sharing in the chat here to be able to, to go get that free trial. The trial also comes with your unlimited free skip tracing, which we're not really going to talk too much about tonight. It's going to be on Monday, but, um, it's a feature we launched at the end of last year to really change the industry of how people pay for data. And we've had customers, I mean, we've been saving people hundreds, if not thousands of dollars a month that were skip tracing that much. So i um, excited to talk about that more on Monday too, but that's going to be included with your with the trial and everything as well. So um, just leave that going in. But what, what I'll say here, let me try to share my screen inside the app here. Cool. Can you see? You can't share Zoom and talk at the same time. It's hard. I know, right? It was <laughs> just clicking around everywhere. Uh, can you see that one? Hopefully. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome, cool, um, perfect. So, with, with that in mind, um, again, we don't want to overthink it. I want to try to keep it as simple and straightforward as possible for this first step. Um, it is really easy to go uh, kind of clicking around and and be unfocused within this step because. You jump into Deal Machine and you're seeing the desktop version here. There's a mobile app as well. If you're doing, and I'll teach you two ways to drive for dollars here. There's an in-person and a virtual option. So I'll show you guys both of those. If you're doing the in-person, you're probably going to use the mobile app because you're driving around, right? It's you know, mobile for a reason, right? So um, it's going to look a little different. Just picture this squeeze down onto your phone. And that's really the main, the only difference is the screen size. Um, but when you jump on a Deal Machine, you'll see here on the desktop, there's a, a ton of you know, things you could explore. There's a lot of filters here. I, I mentioned we have 700 plus data points. We have filters for a ton of different types of data points here, um, which are all useful. But the goal, especially with this challenge out here, is to go drive for dollars because, again, regardless of whatever list you're pulling here, the number one indicator of a motivated seller is the condition of the property. That is our goal, is to, to stay laser focused on those rundown houses, on the houses that are fixer uppers, right? Um, so, so regardless of all the other filters you could be using, we got to focus on that. Um, there's a lot of data as well. 
you know, you can click on any individual property. Today, we're not going to be talking about that piece very much. It's going to be much more focused on that in the neck and on Monday because that that's when it comes into real plays when you're when you're marketing to these individuals. Um, I want you to stay focused. You know, I don't want you to be clicking around. And then we've got again, you know, mortgage data, land info, tax, transaction history, HOA info, demographic data, like all kinds of stuff you can be digging into. It can be really tempting to do that get to a hundred leads first, and then we can, you know, mess with that stuff. So um, our goal is to stay focused on this. I just want to reiterate that because it's easy to, to, to not do that. Um, and again, on the mobile app, it's going to look like this as well. So I'll show you guys what this looks like, but it's going to look somewhat similar. Just squeeze down on your screen here. So um, what, you, what it's going to look like here. So when you jump into deal machine, let me kick over to an area that I've driven, um, at least with some demos recently. Uh, South City, St. Louis here. So, and if anyone's in St. Louis, I'm I'm actively doing deals here. So I'd love to team up <laughs> and reach out direct. <laughs> but um, here, if you zoom in, okay, here we go. So inside deal machine right here in the St. Louis market, what you're looking at here again uh, is just a map of, you know, the area. We've got property data on literally the entire U.S., all 50 states. Um, we have people doing this in their market. We have people doing this virtually, even from Canada, investing in Washington or, you know, people from, you can do it virtually as well, which I'll, I'll touch on the virtual option here. Um, you know, I'll kind of give you that playbook if you fall into that camp. But um, what I'll say here is, again, all you're looking at is just the map inside deal machine. So make sure you're on that, that top map tab right here, uh, where it says map next to leads, dialer, mail, all that stuff. And, you know, again, don't overthink it. What you're looking for is a house in real life. It's a fixer upper and you want to build a list of those. How to do that in deal machine. The, the first step is just to open up the map and then have it lock onto your location. So when you have the mobile app pulled up, you'll see a little blue dot pop up and that's just like your GPS, right? It's, it's using your GPS to locate you the, there and sync up on mobile. So you'll have a little blue dot right there. And if anybody has downloaded the app, follow those links, you know, you'll, you'll see that already. So it'll lock onto your location once you've fully onboarded and you know, it'll have that right there for you with, with all the black dots around you. And all of those dots are just every, you know, it's again, every single property in the U S mapped out for you right there, clickable. So, you know, no matter what, I wouldn't. Kim, do you have any advice on like picking an area of of where to go drive for dollars first? Because I, I, I am happy to share my perspective. But I want to, and Alan too. Feel free to jump in on that question. But well, uh, it, it depends on. I mean, what you're looking for. Um, mm -hmm. but picking a, an area where houses would be resold. So probably not your A market in the high level, the, the ultra expensive houses because they're not going to be turned over. But median price houses to a little bit below that and a little bit above that, those are going to be markets that are, in theory, going to turn over regularly. Um, and and you're going to be more likely to find deals. Whereas if you go, you know, the really high price houses, they don't turn over quite as much and they're probably not going to be run down. And then the super low end market, if I mean, you can, you can do that, but that may not may or may not be the market you want to be working in. So it just depends on, on what your target is. Yeah, I would agree in Baltimore. Unfortunately, in Baltimore, there's a really lot of bad areas. Um, they're not even war zones. They're just so many boarded up houses and vacants that you can't do anything with them because they're, they're, they're just financially not viable. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I would say if you're going to classify neighborhoods B and C, you're kind mm -hmm. of bread and butter, blue collar, working class neighborhoods are probably for the best. And there's a lot of that around Baltimore. Um, and the suburbs, a lot of suburbs of Baltimore have that working class. Um, so in any case, yeah, I would say those B and C neighborhoods, unless you're looking for rentals, if you, you can go low end for rentals. But I would say if you want to flip and you want to, or even wholesale, look for the B and C, maybe D plus neighborhoods where um, you might find uh, an investor who wants that. Um, that's what I would do, blue collar. And there's lots of that around Baltimore. Yep. Love that advice. That that's very reflective of what we always uh, preach as well. Is that B and C neighborhood? So looking for that, you know, middle upper to lower end being the up and coming, you know, and then the the higher end being the the middle upper, uh, you know, price ranges. But I, I'd say, um, especially if you're going to wholesale in general or flip, um, I, I always look at those areas that have a lot of transactions as well. Like you talk about, like just a lot of activity going on. 
And so when you have that in mind, there are ways to use the old machine to do that, uh, to help you kind of identify that. I'll show you guys that in, in a minute. I don't want to overcomplicate the driving for dollars process, but um, when you can, if you can think of that in your mind of what a, in a neighborhood that's not D level or A level, somewhere in between um, that, that, you know, you see more activity going on with that in your mind there. And you know, hopefully it's not, you know, hopefully it's, hopefully it's easy for you to get to that. Hopefully it's, you know, maybe even right around you. Like I always recommend putting as the least number of hoops in front of you as possible to jump through just so way, that way you can get out there and get the reps in and not have anything hold you back from that. Um, jump into deal machine. It'll lock onto your location. And when you go driving around that area, you simply drive down the street. If I'm driving down Gothia Avenue right here in South City, driving down the street, you'll see the map move with me here as I have a little blue dot, you know, I'm driving down Gothia, you'll see the map move along. And then simply if I see 5725 Gothia in real life's in bad shape, easy enough, I click on that inside the app. You actually, if you point the mobile app at it, it'll actually pop up right there for you too, which makes it really easy. It's, it's uh, kind of augmented reality oriented that way. But you just, you know, Click on that property, hit add lead. You'll see a little blue pin pop up right there. And then you move on to the next one. As simple as that, you're driving around, you're looking for houses that have the gutters falling off, broken boarded up windows, front yard, backyard's a mess. The roof's got a tarp on it or is in bad shape. Um, it's got really overgrown grass. It's got a really overstuffed mailbox, you know, signs that it's vacant. Um, even signs that it's just outdated, that it needs, needs updating. It's got you know, window AC unit, it's got, you know, aluminum, those old school aluminum awnings. You, you see, uh, you know, uh, one, one example I use all the time is our first hire deal machine was, was using deal machine himself in Raleigh, North Carolina. He found a house that had Halloween decorations up, except it was March. And it's just like, you know what? So they're just not keeping up with the appearance of the property. It can be as simple as that for what, you know, a visual cue that they're not keeping up with the appearance can be a little more subtle that way. I would call that a lead, and you can you know add that that way. Um, do you, Alan and Kim? Do you ha do you guys have any advice on what you look for when you're when you're out there driving like that? Um, same things you do. I don't do a lot of driving for dollars. I did in the past. Um, mm -hmm. I do a lot of direct mail nowadays. I've kind of got lazy in my old age, and <laughs> um, but I've noticed my response rate has gone down um, in the last six months or so. So I feel like I probably do need to pick up the pace and, and do some driving for dollars. Because at this point in my career, I know exactly what neighborhoods I want to target, and um, I do know what to look for. Again, as you said, it's all the obvious signs. Um, in the winter time here, we get um, a fair amount of snow some years, so any unshoveled um, pathways. Which again, um, you can be fine in theory. You can be fine for not shoveling within 24 hours of the end of the snowstorm. So anything mm -hmm. that's um, uh, not shoveled, uh, high grass, you can get fined for. So you certainly uh, can look for those kinds of things. Unfortunately, in Baltimore, again, you can find broken windows, teenagers or kids, you know, throw rocks through the windows, that kind of thing. Um, if it's a, you know, so in any case, there are a lot of blue collar neighborhoods. Baltimore used to be, be a big manufacturing uh, hub and um, there was steel and, and shipbuilding and that kind of thing. And that's a lot of that's going away. But the neighborhoods, you know, the people are not making a living. They're, they're moving away or they're not able to keep up their houses. So, yeah, um, like I said, I need to get back in the car more and um, pay attention. I, I drive around, but I don't really pay attention. But I think with your app, I think I will pay attention for those houses and look them up again. Yeah, Perfect. I think mean, it's a great opportunity for that. Um, but Kim, go ahead. What were you going to say there? Well, well, I agree with all of those things. Um, and going back to what neighborhoods to target, I was at a class a couple months ago, and he said, you want to target neighborhoods that have a Walmart? And I'm like, that is a good, I, I'd never thought of that, but that is a good, if, if there's a Walmart. It, Kim, I would even say a dollar a store. Kim, I would say a dollar store of some kind, dollar general. one, Because that really, I think, speaks more than even a Walmart. Because I shop at Walmart, but they do have some good prices. <laughs> yeah, I mean. But yeah, I, I, I look for trash and uh, oh, I used to look for phone books, but. I don't think they have those anymore. I don't know. Maybe they do, but I haven't gone out looking for phone books. And um, I also look for stickers in windows um, mm -hmm. because people might have notices taped to their door or or they might have moved out and my house might be vacant and there's a sticker in the window. So I also look for sheets of paper taped to the window. That's a good one. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll say too, I saw in the chat questions about the app itself. Feel free. Here's my direct email for you guys, just matt at dealmachine.com. Happy to help there. I'll say uh, for Matt, if you were having issues with your phone, it might be, you know, I know for the mobile app as well, you'll maybe just try like closing out your other apps, um, you know, see if, see if that helps at all. Um, you know, if, if it's, uh, you know, I know we're always updating the versions and everything like, you know, once every two weeks, we have a new, a new, uh, uh version of deal machine that's being updated in the app store. So, um, you know, if, if you had deal machine in the past, um, just make sure it's updated, but if not, uh, then just email me direct and I'll make sure to help you out there. Uh, so, so you get all set up and ready to do the homework. Great, great tips guys. So, um, with, and yeah, no problem, Matt. So with what you're looking for here again, inside Deal Machine, you're driving down the street, driving down Gofi here, I click on a property, hit that add lead button, it pins the property and I move on to the next one. Don't don't overthink it. That's how you get, you know, you have your first two done here. Um, a couple of pro tips to make this even more effective for you to just go out there and get to that that hundred, you know, count as, as quick and effectively as possible. Um, you know, one you can use, there's the, there's the, uh, uh, standard view, but there's also a satellite view that a lot of people prefer and helps you kind of like lock onto the, the house, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, rooftops and things. So that way it just makes it easy for you to kind of use that to be able to identify where you're at. Let me go back over to my the location I was already at before. Um, I'll say, you notice there's all these different colored lines right here. This is something that in the mobile app, when you drive around, it's locking on your location and it's route tracking for you as well. And that was solving that problem that I know Kim, <laughs> Kim had laughed at earlier. It's, it was David getting out there and he had added the same lead, you know, he'd written it down four different times, you know, and, and uh, you know, again, it's a good lead, but there's no need to do that now. Like you want to be able to get out there. You don't have to highlight an old map. Like I know a lot of people used to do it's, it's Okay. Now I've got, you know, the ability to just have this little tail pop up behind me. And when I drive around, I can see that it's just showing me exactly where I've been and I never have to double back on my routes. And, you know, I also know that over time it changes colors. It turns yellow at six months and red at a year. So that way you can then look at the map visually and figure out, oh man, it's been, you know, at least 12 months since I've been over here. You know, it's been six months since I've been over here. And when it changes colors, that's a great time to go redrive those routes because a lot can change in that time period. Also, if you've done a deal somewhere and you and you see, oh, now that whole area now is yellow after I've done this deal here a couple months ago, let me go redrive that area. It was a good area for me to be doing deals in. And so um, it's, you know, that kind of route tracking is super helpful and going to save you a ton of time in the process. Uh, I also love the tap to add properties toggle right here. If you turn that on, that's something that if you are just driving, you know, if you're physically driving around, um, it makes it way easier to not have to click twice, click on the property and add lead. You can just literally turn this on and it taps to add the property. You just tap on that circle, boom, 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 and it adds the property for you. So you don't have to press anything else. It just makes it really simple and easy to go do that while you're out, you know, driving around. And so the route tracking, I highly recommend the tap to add properties. I highly recommend um, one other thing that is fantastic. And again, don't don't spend too much time on this because it would be easy to, to go do that. Um, but the highlights, the filters on deal machine, you can actually do that and have that aid you in the driving for dollars process, too. So, for example, you could go into our quick filters and say, you know what? Only show me properties that are high equity. You know, I mean, let me try that. So that way I know I have a better chance if I'm going to wholesale it, that it's going to be more qualified. Well, now as I drive down the street, I'm looking for distressed properties. And when I look at the app, if it's also got a highlight on it, as you can see here with these, that means that's a great lead, right? That means it fits whatever criteria you put in there. And it's also run down. I am, you, you found it in real life that, that that's the number one thing, but you're, you're doing those two things together. So that highlight can also be super, super helpful in just kind of really almost like lead scoring in real time. Um, you can even, you know, if you were to tap and add a property that way, if you want to go even a layer deeper, you could add a tag to the property too. So I could jump in there and just say like, oh, this is a high priority because it was highlighted and run down, right? So it's, you know, I, I'd recommend that if you're out there and want to kind of, again, don't overthink it. Don't, don't, add too many things to your, to your to-do list. I, you know, I'd rather you just go out there and drive for dollars, but if you want to get in and really spend some time finding super high priority leads, 
maybe think about adding one layer of data like that and tagging the property high priority when you find those houses. So um, that's something that's super, super helpful. Uh, I will mention you do have, if you're on the pro plan inside Deal Machine, you can click on your little profile up here. You can go into team right here and you actually get three users if you're on pro. And so you can, we've seen people team up doing this. We've seen people have bird dogs. If you've heard that term before, bird dogs jump in with your account and, you know, be a, somebody else, you know, it could be a, anybody from a family member to a friend to, you know, the Uber driver you just talk to, to, you know, to mail, you know, a mailman. Like we've had people do, you know, team up with all kinds of people that are just in the field every day, seeing a lot of houses and say, Hey, you know what? I'll add you to my deal machine account. And you can just make them a driver only, which I have Elliot right here. So he can't send any mail. He can't touch my billing, anything like that. He can only just add leads. And so if you give him driver permission, you effectively have a bird dog to go out there and, you know, go do this with you and, and for you. So um, that, that team feature is super, super helpful. Uh, and then the, the last thing I want to touch on was the virtual driving piece, but uh, Kim or Alan, any, any thoughts to what I just showed there in terms of like the pro tips, is there any of them that, you, that really stand out to you as something you would recommend people do? I like the, um, I like the bird dog function. Mm -hmm. I tried bird dogs a while back. It didn't really, um, many, many years ago, it didn't work out. I think with something like this, um, I think I could get some people working for me, and um, I'm happy. To, I'm always happy to pay referrals. In fact, on the back of my business card, I have um, how we pay referrals to people. And when I sometimes I get out when I'm looking at a house, I've got a lead on, and I walk the neighborhood a little bit. I don't do door knocking, but if people are sitting out on the porch in the summer, I'll go talk to them and I'll tell them I pay referral fees, and they get all excited. But I've never gotten a referral. I've never paid one out to somebody that I just met randomly. I, I have gotten referrals um, from previous um, sellers I've dealt with. But in any case, um, I think having that bird dog would be well worth um, the, the price of the app, which is well, you know relatively inexpensive, considering how much money you can make with the deals you do. Yeah, yeah you do one deal, it pays for, for the lifetime of it, essentially. So, and I um, think you have a lot of bird dogs in St. Louis because I've been to several trainings from some of your other investors that have different training and stuff from St. Louis. And um, one that stood out for me, um, the guy just, he was going to his local RIA and like during the buy, sell trade or whatever, he would get up and say, Hey, I'm looking for new investors that want to make money now that have the time. Would you just drive around and look for do deals for me? But we didn't have this tool. They were just writing down addresses and then emailing them to him this way. They don't have to do anything. It makes their life easier. They can just put it on the app. Yep. You send Biden by email and you can say driver right here. And so it gives me just permission to go out there and whenever they see a house, that's a good lead. Just, you know, tap and add it for you real quick. So awesome. Um, awesome. Especially if you're more advanced investor, that's the thing that I would like. You want to kind of buy back your time, but still get the benefits of the strategy. I'd highly recommend focusing on bird dogs. So um Awesome. Any other questions on the Facebook chat or anything, Kim? Um, uh, no, nope, they're not asking questions on Facebook. I'll double check it, but they, I hadn't asked anything last time I checked. We're good. Cool. Okay. Just so making sure I'm, I'm uh, addressing everything. So um, perfect. And then the final piece here that you want to touch on before we get to really officially signing the homework and, and kind of giving you the rundown on the rest of the challenge here um, is the virtual driving for dollars. And, you know, this is something that, if you you are investing in a market you're not physically based in or you have a day job and it's really hard to get out during the day and drive around or, you know, you, you, uh, you know, have a virtual assistant that could help you or you, um, you know, it's really bad weather. You don't have a car. You don't. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of reasons why virtual could be a great option. I always recommend it the the in person option first, just because it's the most up to date data is what you see with your eyes, right? Uh, but having this as a great secondary option can be super powerful still. And how you can actually do this, in addition to you know the the, the you know in person driving, I just taught you the top left corner. There's a little orange button that says start driving on the mobile app. This is the one thing I wanted to show you on mobile here that's a little bit different. On the mobile app here, if you go in the bottom left corner, the drive for leads button, which is what you're going to be using, uh, one of the options there is also virtual drive. That second one down is virtual drive. So whenever you have the mobile app open, 
you know, you're sitting drive for leads and free driving is what I've been showing you, but there's a virtual drive option that comes up. That virtual option, what it's doing is it's using all of our data and lay layering that over a uh, Google street image. So you can click on start driving, click anywhere on the map, hit start driving. And now I'm off to the races of same idea of driving for dollars, but you can just go click for dollars you drive down the street do it while you got the football game on tonight. <laughs> you know, you can do that. You know, you've got that. You see that see a, a rundown house, uh, you know, which I, I know this area probably isn't going to have too many opportunities. But if you look and find a house that is in rough shape and you can zoom in and kind of look at it. And you know, if, it, if it's got, again, all those telltale signs, same idea. You just click on that add lead button. It'll pin that property. You'll see it down here. Same thing. Here are those tags I talked about. Right. So the, the high priority tag is right is one that I've created for myself right there. And you, know, you move on to the next one. And so this is, a again, I always recommend the in-person strategy first just because it's the most up-to-date information. This strategy, well, the one biggest pro tip I can share, and let me see if anyone, you might have already asked it in the chat here. Um, let's see. Uh, nope, didn't ask. So, But but I, the one question I always get is, hey, how, you know, how old are these photos? Like, is this, you know, is this a, a data, is this data still relevant? Um, the one biggest pro tip I can share is look at this photo taken date in the bottom right corner. So you'll see it's May 2022 for the neighborhood I'm in right now. You'd be shocked by how up to date most of these are. Like a lot of neighborhoods Google goes through in the major markets, um, you know, if not annually, every other year. Uh, but what I will tell you is uh, even if it's like a six, seven, eight year old photo, what you can always do is you can qualify the lead by looking at that house and, and comparing the photo taken date to the date on the property of when it was last sold. So I can click into this property and see, hey, this hasn't sold since 2006. And this photo was taken in 2022. Like it's still probably in similar condition to when this photo was taken. E again, even if it's a six, seven year old photo, but the house is in really bad shape, it has not changed hands at all because you look at the transaction history and it hasn't been sold for 30 years or what have you, still highly likely that it's in similar shape. And so that's the one qualifier I would say is, is you know, compare the photo taken date to when that was last sold. And if it uh, if the photo has not been taken uh, since the house was sold, then, then uh, you know, then, you know, that's the one time I would weed it out. So um, does that all make sense there? Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. I was uh, driving a, a house that I own in California and the, the, I was trying to see what it looked like and the pictures were taken in August. I'm like, well, cool. Google's Google. Now if the Google would only go oh. knock on the door and see if there's anybody in the house. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, they, they drive these things a lot. So it's you're highly likely in your market. You, you can find some pretty up-to-date stuff, but, um, I'll mention, I mean, here again, I, I didn't really talk about this specifically, but while it tracks your route, it gives you a route summary too. So you can see like, hey, here's the one lead I added and I drove for, you know, tr drove for two minutes, you know, this far um, is great for tax reasons too. You know, it's kind of, you can, you know, use this as a way to, uh, for, for tracking, you know, your time driving around and things. Um, you can view past drives right here. So you can toggle this on to, to be able to view that. And I can see, hey, I, let me go down to my business partner who drove around and, uh, you know, out in West County and, and in Baldwin area and drove, you know, for and added these leads and here's the route he drove and here's the leads he added. So I can, I can use that, especially for like the bird dogs. It's a really, really useful feature. So, um, there we go, guys. That's, that's the main stuff in terms of the technology itself. Again, Monday, we're going to really, really get into the marketing portion of what to do with these leads. I just want to make sure you guys felt super comfortable with just going out there and, and driving for dollars, whether it be in-person or virtual, get to those hundred leads and do it with a few pro tips here that can save you some time and just make it more strategic for you. So um, inside the deal machine app, that's what you're going to be looking at. Now for the challenge itself, let me go back over to these uh, slides here. There we go. You can see those slides again, Kim, right? Uh -huh. Yes. Perfect. So uh, the next step, you may, you guys may have caught on here. <laughs> I've said this a few times. But your homework between now and Monday is, you guessed it, at 100 Driving for Dollars leads. And so, you know, go out there. Again, use the links that we've been sharing. I'll, I'll pull those links back up here just one more, uh, one, uh, one more time for you guys here. 
but use those links to get out there and go build your driving for dollars list for all those reasons we just talked about. You know, look for those factors, those uh, individual things that really make it stick out that, hey, you know what, this person may not want to deal with this property more, anymore or maybe can't deal with this property anymore. Let me help them out. Let me reach out to them and see if they're looking to sell. Um, and that's it is to get to those hundred leads and not, you know, not, you don't have to take that next step. If you're an overachiever, feel free to, to start marketing. But uh, Monday is going to be really uh, focused on teaching you guys exactly how to market to them in the most strategic way possible too. So um, that's what you're looking at for the homework itself. Oh, Kim, go ahead before I get to where to turn it in. So what Matt has a question and I was, it was something I was thinking about too. So you were saying a really good filter if you were going to try to wholesale was looking for houses with high equity, mm -hmm. but what if somebody was maybe looking to do more creative deals, they might be looking for houses with little equity yep. or if they were looking for rental properties, they might be looking for properties that are already owned by a landlord. Yep. Um, uh, so burnout landlord. So there's a lot of different lists that, Think about, you know, if you're thinking about a certain target market, what kind of qualities would that seller have and can, are they on the list? And then you could filter that way as well. Yeah, that's, that's the real answer is kind of reverse engineer what your exit strategy is, what type of deal you want to do, and then maybe select one data point that would help indicate that. Um, we actually use the high equity one and, you know, when, I, when we're driving for dollars in my market, in my own business, well, cause, because we're mostly focused on the, the wholesale or kind of like mini flip approach. Um, but yeah, but you know, if you're doing a creative deal, low equity could work. If you're doing, like you mentioned, if you're, uh, you can also search like owner owns less than three properties or, you know, these individual niche data points that tell you, but you can really dig in and, and you know, maybe uh, you could say like, hey, they haven't sold it in more than 15 years, like things like that, that can help kind of uh, give you a direction, which again, I don't want you to overthink that part. The main thing to look for is the condition of the property above everything else. It's just that data point and the highlights with it may help you kind of really identify those super high priority leads that maybe we should market to first on Monday, right? A uh, special bonus, like I mentioned, is to help get out there and complete the homework. You get that seven-day free trial. The unlimited free contact info is going to be with that, which, again, on Monday, we're going to talk about how to use that, what exactly what that uh, is going to help you do on, on reaching out to sellers. And then you also get uh, free postcards and call call minutes with this as well. Just go to that dealmachine.com slash Mary save. So M-A-R-E-I save. What I will say is as we go through this too, um, you've got one opportunity tomorrow afternoon and then uh, next week as well, a couple of these, but we actually have Ryan, Ryan right here, our head of customer success uh, gets on four times a week live. Um, you do have a chat in the app as well, a support chat that gets back to you in five minutes or less during business hours. So they're, they're great to help you out there too. Our YouTube channel's got literally like 1,500 videos on uh, on a variety of different things. So that, that's a good place to, to answer deal machine questions. But outside of that, Ryan is live uh, four days a week. Um, so I'd recommend uh, saving this bookmark too, or bookmark this link rather, um, dealmachine.com slash office hyphen hours. That's a great resource to be able to make sure you've got a live person you can jump on and talk to once a day. So be able to say, hey, you know, I'm doing this or that. What should I do differently here? And obviously you've got my email too. So I'm, I can help you guys out as well. So um, you've got a variety of ways to have that support to make sure you're getting out there and and have the app set up to go, go get that homework done. So um, happy deal finding guys. Uh, awesome seeing everybody. Uh, hopefully you had a, had a great weekend. I saw a good handful of people turning the homework. So congrats to you guys. Great work on that, on putting in the hard work to stuff that actually matters, which is leading with action. So uh, fantastic having people, you know, knock that out over the weekend. Uh, as well, if you could jump in the chat, just like last time, let me know where you're based out of. That's always super helpful for me. Uh, let me know where you're at in your real estate investing journey. Also super helpful for knowing uh, and giving the whole group context on, you know, whether you're working on your first deal or or your hundredth deal, like I said last time. So um, please put that in the chat for me. Uh, that's always super, super helpful. Um, I'm based here in St. Louis. So if anyone's doing deals out in St. Louis, I'll, you know, connect with me directly on that. Always doing local deals as well. But um, Kim, did you get any feedback from people, uh, you know, over the last couple of days? Like how, uh, you know, any, uh, any, anybody talk about the experience for you, uh, you know, to begin with or. Well, Renee was like, um, asking me, uh, she's like, I drove around and I actually physically put in 14 properties, but I have 
a whole bunch more than that. So uh, I, she said she did um, um, she did a, a a filter and she had added a lot of the properties through that filter in the area she was looking. So I think that's where she came up with all the extra properties to to mm -hmm. make her homework list. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, and and that's something too. I mean, I know we talked about list building and, and, and pulling based on uh, pulling lists in general based on data. That's for sure a great option and, and one way you can be building a list of leads that way. But in addition to that, I know we talked about, uh, you know, driving for dollars being the, the number one uh, lead gen source in terms of the best bang for your buck, the best, the least number of deals or least number of prospects it'll take to get to a deal. Just because again, Hey, if you find a house that's in in uh, you know in, in in bad shape or in a, is a fixer upper, that's the number one indicator that they're looking to sell. So that, that was kind of our goal was giving you guys that playbook going through that. I'm driving for a different kind of deal. Um, so here's my question: I have a house in California that I do not want, and okay. I think I'm going to be getting back from the the person we were seller financing it to. So mm -hmm. could I drive for buyer leads? going up and down the street to find all the landlords on the street. Cause I pretty sure they're all rentals and, absolutely. and use that yeah. to find like, to find somebody to buy my house. Yep. Absolutely. So you can use uh within deal machine as well. I'll, I'll get to that here. When, uh, if it's okay, right. When we get to the demo section, I can show you how to do that, but there's, there's a way to identify house flippers. There's a way to identify uh, people in the area that, that have bought with cash. There's a way to identify people who own a certain number of properties. So you could say, hey, show me everybody in this zip code that owns 10 or more properties. And, you know, that's a great, great chance to to figure out like, oh, who who's who's building that portfolio? Who might want, want, might want one more uh, and be able to, to go that way. So, uh, yep. I learned when you're in teeny tiny towns, there's one person that owns everything and you got to find that one person and whatever they're going to pay, that's what they'll pay. There you go. <laughs> hey, that will make it easy to find that person here. So um, cool. awesome, guys. Well, uh, you know, I, I know I'm kind of asking this here, but I'd love to know if you put in the chat, what has been your biggest takeaway so far, especially from the people who've done the homework, who've gotten out there, or at least started to really take action here. Like what any anything that really stood out as a big takeaway for you or something you guys learned over the last, uh, you know, last couple of days here. There we go. Hey, hey, Matthew. So probably, uh, probably that it's easy to find potential. Yeah, there's again, uh, you know, all of you guys found at least a hundred hidden opportunities right here. So um, building that list of prospects was fantastic. Yep, the ease of capturing the leads, absolutely. So I'm um, glad that was, uh, yeah, and <laughs> for sure. All that paper. That's something again. You know, big theme of uh, of the last call was was showing you that hey. You don't need to go out there and uh, bring, you know, paper and old old school, you know, writing down addresses and highlighting on maps and trying to figure out, have I been on this this street? And, oh, I've been on it four times already. Like that was very easy to easy to do uh, in the past. Our goal was to give you technology to make that whole process really simple and easy. So um, that was fantastic. I, I like that it reminded you where you were at. Or, mm -hmm. or, you know, by the color. So you were there a month ago, two months ago, three months ago. So if you've driven the neighborhood, you might want in, maybe you left, had a leave behind or something. You could go drive it again and, and try again. Yeah. That color coding, I best, uh, I would say best practice there, that color coding. If once it turns yellow, I'd recommend redriving because at, at that point, like it's been six months and a lot can change in six months. So I, I, I always recommend that being kind of the turning point of, especially if you're doing deals in that area and you're like, oh man, I you know this is a good area for me. Obviously, uh, I would highly recommend redriving around that time period. So, perfect, awesome guys. Well, um, again, great job to you guys. Congrats on turning in the homework so far. We had a good good handful on here do the homework. Um, let me see. Oh, Brooke said biggest takeaway was finding the right neighborhood. Yeah, awesome. Two hours to find twenty four leads in one area, about a hundred plus in two hours in the right area. Absolutely. Yeah, when you find that sweet spot that you want to invest. And there's a lot of opportunity. You can go much, much quicker and really build up that list. So um, again, last time we talked about it, why now is such a great time to take action, especially this time of year when people are, are again, starting to shut down, starting to mail it in, start to say, oh yeah, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll wait till 2025. And this is just such a great opportunity to stand out in your market. There are people, especially this time of year, that that want to get you know want to get rid of properties that might be dealing with something urgent that you can really help them, uh, you know, help help either solve for them or help be the be the person they're looking for to team up with before the end of the year. And again, now is now is a better time than ever. Like you're going through this experience together, 
You're holding each other accountable. You're going to qualify for thousands of dollars of free prizes that were given away on the last call here on Wednesday. So um, you've got a, a ton of reasons to make this uh, your, your chance to step up and, and lead with action here. Where most people get stuck is that they just don't know where or how to find that great deal. So that is what this challenge is giving you is that playbook help you go out there over these seven days and know again how to build that list of of the most motivated sellers in your market how to then take action on that list which is the theme of today you know we're talking about you know how do you turn these addresses into appointments so we're gonna be talking through marketing playbook there today and then um you know finally on, the, on wednesday we're gonna be talking about how to make offers how to close the deal and so um, everything that we do, it's focused on this one mission from a deal machine perspective. It's to give everyone the power of real estate investing. We shared David's story last time of how he got into this and how he, uh, you know, was a brand new investor and had a tech background and was really burnt out on the tech job and solved his own problem, building what is version one of deal machine. And, you know, we've reiterated again and again and again and again to get to this point now of, of really giving you guys access to, to data, as you as you well have noticed, and also marketing strategies that previously were for huge companies with huge budget, budgets, and now give it to you in the power of your hand right here, and and you know really arm the the you know the kind of the the uh, one off or the solopreneur, the mom and pop investor, the smaller investor, small and mighty like that. So um, let's see. Uh, I'll keep monitoring the chat here too, Kim. Feel free to if, if anybody asks an urgent question, feel free to jump in there. Well, but, yeah. To go back to you were looking at filters. Matt's asking, what uh -huh. are your thoughts on pursuing um, um, pre foreclosures? But mm -hmm. I'm going to assume that there's some filters that could help you target pre foreclosures. Yep. Yep. So I'll, I'll I'll go through that, and then I'll go through the uh, cash buyer uh, question as well. So Perfect. Um, great stuff, guys. So and again, our whole our whole uh, mission through these seven days is to share what's working in today's market. And really, it's. Uh, you know, we've seen this work in literally every single state. We've had over 10,000 deals done using Deal Machine to this point. Um, you know, 4.8 out of five stars. We're really, really proud to say we're the highest rated and most reviewed app out there for real estate investors to find off-market deals like this. So um, the more that we can share what's working and give you guys that knowledge and, and arm you with that, the better we're doing our job. Like we know as a company, like, hey, we want to make you guys as successful as possible. And uh, and, and that's when we show our value. So um, that's what this is all about is, is really to show you guys, again, whether you're using Deal Machine or not, the playbook of what's working in today's market each time, each day through this challenge. Um, Ryan Haywood is a great example of somebody who went through this and, you know, at 30 days, uh, of, of a challenge back in 2020, 17 days in did his first deal, uh, 72 deals later, he had completed his first year as an investor. He was brand new to this and, and, and started this, um, you know, in, in 2020 and has done over 400 deals in St. Joe, Missouri, uh, since then. So not too far from, uh, from a few of you on here. So. You know, Patrick Martin was another example of somebody who was literally sleeping in their truck and then found real estate and deal machine through kind of YouTube University here and uh, did 10 or 14 deals in his first 10 months after going all in on this, these strategies and over 150K in wholesale fees changed his life going through this. So um, that's these are the type of stories that we want to learn from, figure out what they did, and then kind of reverse engineer that to share with you guys. Hey, here's how you can be doing that too through this challenge as well. Again, the reminder for this first homework assignment was to build a list of 100 driving for dollars leads. So um, what we're gonna do today to start off with is I wanna do a brief recap because we you know, we did this on, on Thursday. I wanna make sure it's fresh for all of you guys. Make sure that people have a chance to catch up. If they missed that first one, that's okay. You've got a chance. I would, I would recommend watching that replay because we get into way more detail uh, on that replay, but this is gonna be a good recap for you. Just very brief, show you guys high level again, what, what you missed on the first training to make sure that you're all caught up. And even if you were on that first training, you'll, you should pick up more pro tips here. Like hopefully it's another good mental rep to make sure you're, you're doing it uh, as efficiently and effectively as possible. And, you know, you might find your own ways that work your own little, little, you know, processes and things like that. But um, again, I just want to share broadly, Hey, here's what's working as best practices and then make sure that you guys feel very comfortable at, at continuing to improve at this and, and not just make it a, a seven day habit of going out there and, and doing this, but uh, using this as a foundation for future success. Like we want this to be 
uh, a way for you to really build in great habits and continue with this way beyond these seven days and go out there. And again, uh, you know, whether you're doing deals, you know, uh, between now and, and Wednesday, all the way through to, you know, uh, way beyond this, like that, we want to give you this lasting impact beyond these couple, couple, the first training. Awesome. That's the lifeblood of it is, is having prospects, having that list. Um, but that's not worth anything unless you then yeah, take well, the next that. step, Listen, right? The next step, the... that, that first homework is fantastic. That's obviously super important, but again, that next step is where things really, really come together. Like the exciting part, the thing that really matters isn't just having the addresses. It's actually building relationships with potential sellers, actually making that conversation happen, actually knowing how to reach out to them um, in the most effective means possible. So I, that's our goal today is really handy that marketing playbook. Um, I'll talk a little bit about uh, how to reach, you know, or, or how to have that conversation, you know, first off with them, but, and Kim can weigh in there as well too. But um, yeah, we're going to cover marketing playbook, talk a little bit around, uh, around sales and how to build that relationship with sellers, and then uh, give you guys that homework assignment to be able to knock out uh, before, uh, before Wednesday to really qualify for all, all the great prizes there. So um, let me, let me check the chat here. I see a few uh, things in the chat here. So uh, yeah, I've Mona... used several apps that are lead list apps, and this uh -huh. is one of the easiest to figure out and navigate, I think. But awesome. Thank some you. of the others I've tried out. Yeah, we really, uh, really, really focus on building a kind of like an intuitive uh, interface there and really focus on helping people if you have, you know, if you're an advanced investor all the way to somebody who is, you know, brand new to real estate, like we want to give you tools to be simple enough to be able to execute, but then complex enough to grow with you as you become more and more advanced. So, um, awesome. Uh, th thank you so much for the compliment there, Desmona. Uh, good, good seeing you. <laughs> awesome. I, lo I love it. So to kind of begin again, recap this, uh, this first, first, uh, little training here, what we talked about on Thursday last week again was building a list of the most motivated sell most motivated sellers in your market. And really the main strategy we talked through on how to do this, like because there is a ton of data inside Deal Machine. There's multiple ways you can be doing this. But the main strategy we talked about with this challenge is, is driving for deals or driving for dollars. And just to define that, again, it's getting in your car, you know, physically, you know, getting in a car driving around and looking for those fixer upper properties, you know, looking for those houses that, that have a tarp, you know, a tarp on the roof or gutters falling off or broken boarded up windows or, um, uh, you know, weeds growing through the concrete or, uh, just signs that it's really outdated, like, a um, you know, an, a window AC unit or in St. Louis, those old school aluminum awnings, um, signs that it's vacant, like overgrown grass or overly overstuffed mailboxes, things like that, where, you know, it doesn't have to be a house that's that's fallen over. It's just anything that needs that updating that is, is just not being kept up with by that owner for whatever reason, whether it be a property they just don't want to deal with anymore, they can't deal with anymore. There's There could be hundreds of reasons why they might be looking to sell. But again, out of all data points, the number one indicator they might be looking to sell is the physical condition of the property. So that was our goal was helping you guys identify how to ident how to build that list of those types of properties as quick as possible um, in your market and, and, and kind of choosing the right area and, and, and going through that. You know, we really talked about B and C neighborhoods, not the high end, not the low end, but somewhere in the middle in your market. Um, and then, you know, going into to deal machine, you know, with those links that I shared with you guys and that Kim put in the chat there, um, helping you just quickly build that list of leads instead of having to write down every single address old school and, and you know, try to figure out where, where to go. Uh, you know, this, our goal is to, again, save you as much time as possible in the process. So um, through that entire kind of uh, initial goal, uh, we showed you guys how to do that in person. So driving for dollars, you know, physically in your car and then taking your phone with you and letting it lock on your location and, and, you know, drive around that way. Um, and we also showed you guys virtual driving for dollars too. So, so how to do this if you don't have a car, how to do this if you have, um, you know, a virtual assistant, or if you are not physically based in the market that you're going to be investing in, or uh, you want to, you know, multitask and get this done in, you know, in addition to, you know, doing, doing whatever. So um, we just trying to give you a couple different options there. Virtual is still really effective. I, I always recommend in person if possible, if you have that option, but it, virtual is a great plan B, you know, it uses a lot of great, uh, you know, you've got the, the, the data around the property, you've got the data around the owner, 
Um, you've got image data that you're going to be looking at using Google Street Image, and most places are are relatively up to date on on those images too. So, um, what it looks like inside the app here, just briefly for you guys. Here, let me pull this up again for you. Um, here we go. And Kim, did, did you have any other uh, well, any other tip on the D4D side that uh, I, I highly recommend the physical driving. Because mm -hmm. whenever I have marketed and had a more targeted that I built the list, it wasn't something I just downloaded. I built it myself because I drove by the properties and I got better response on all of my efforts. So if you're out there spending what I don't even know what it costs to send a, a, a mail piece these days, but I, I know postage has gone up and up and up and up. Um, mm -hmm. So you can save money. You're going to spend more time driving for dollars, but you're going to have a more, more effective mailing or if you're cold calling, which I believe we can do some calling through the app, mm -hmm. it's going to be more effective if you're calling houses that are very obviously in disrepair versus all the other houses up and down the street. Yep. Yeah, that's a great point, Kim. Um, that's something that, you know, why, why we mentioned it's the best, uh, you know, bang for your buck, like the least number of leads it takes to get to a deal. Not only is it because that's the number one indicator they're looking to sell is that it's that it's in bad shape, but it's also the least competitive leads in your market because it requires that sweat equity. Not everyone's willing to get out there and go build this list of leads by driving around. And, and, you know, it's a list that no one else has. Like you're building a list of truly hidden opportunities that anyone can easily go in and, and pull a list of, of, uh, of leads based on data really quickly. The people who actually take that extra step and go out there and drive and search for leads like that, um, that, I mean, that's where you're going to find the really hidden deals there that are, that no one else is going after. So um, yeah, great, great reminder there, Kim. So uh, what, what that looks like inside the app itself. Again, you know, you want it to lock on your location. This is the mobile or this is the, the desktop version, obviously, but there is a mobile app too, just like this, you know, squeeze down on your phone screen as you guys were using. And then it locks on your location. You'll see here's all that route tracking that we were talking about, right? The, the green ones, little, it's a little tail that pops up behind you while you drive around. But the green ones means that I've driven it within the last six months at six months, it turns yellow and at 12 months, it turns red. So it's really easy to just kind of visually look at the map. And I've, I've done a lot of demos in this area, but look at the map and figure out like, where have I driven and where, where do I, where should I be driving, you know, next? Um, so this is a great chance to kind of use that to, to, again, save you a ton of time and make sure you cover entire neighborhoods um, really simply, quickly, easily like that. So, um, you know, we went through that. Uh, a lot of people may have used the satellite view. I always per I prefer that when I drive around, it makes it easier to kind of see the, the different rooftops as you drive and make sure you're in the right place. The tap to add properties mode was fantastic as well. So as you drive down the street, like driving down Delore here in South City, St. Louis, all the little black dots around me are houses, right? Or, or properties. If I see 5873 Delore in real life is run down, I click on it in the app, I click add lead, and it pins that property right here. So it'll, it'll turn it blue. But if I turn on the tap to add, it's saving a couple steps. So that for me, I love driving around with that that feature on because then I can just see like, oh, look down down the road, this one's you know distressed and this one's distressed and this one's distressed. And I can just tap, tap, tap. And as I go, it just makes it really easy to get to that, that 100 number pretty quick. So um, we showed off that. Um, you know, we mentioned that uh, the you're talking about you know data and you know pulling a list based on data. You still can use the data in a strategic way inside the Deal Machine app while you're driving for dollars. You know, we talked about basically clicking on a filter and saying something like, "Hey, only show me properties that have high equity," as an example. And when you click on that, you'll be able to see, "Hey, you know, here's all the properties that that highlight that fit that criteria." So. As you drive around, if you find a property that is highlighted and run down, that's a really, really good lead. Like, make sure to prioritize that property. So um, you can click on that, and you know, let me turn off the uh, tap to add mode, and then uh, and, and build that list that way too. So the highlights. You can also, but you could also come home after you've done your driving for dollars and apply the filters and see which houses are high equity or the which ones might be low equity, mm -hmm. and you might want to have different marketing for the different types of, uh, of situations. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Just because it's high, it's low equity again. Yeah. Like you said, doesn't mean that it's a bad lead. It's just a different type of salt problem. You might be solving a different solution you can propose to them. So um, for example, here's, here's my driving for dollars list in St. Louis. Well, Hey, I could go in here and go to my filters right here, go to all filters and then say, uh, Hey, show me only properties that have equity uh, percentage that is, you know, greater than 50, we'll call it and confirm that. And now when I apply those filters, the 1200 is now down to 1100. So I can see, see here, okay, great. Here are all the properties that fit that particular criteria and can build, build lists based off that build marketing strategies based off that. So great, uh, great tip there. <laughs> um, Awesome. We also talked about, like I mentioned, um, the virtual driving for dollars option, you know, so that, that was this orange button right here. And on mobile, um, you just click add, add lead or drive for leads. And then it was like the second option down, but same idea as you would in real life, but you're going clicking for dollars here. So you're doing it virtually and driving down the street. And again, it's going to uh, tell you as well. It's going to uh, you know be able to track your route. And then when you look at a house, you just hit add lead this way and it pins the property. So same same type of, of strategy and process, just doing it virtual too. Um, so we, we talked about that a little bit. And then a uh, final tip here was adding bird dogs. We talked about that as well, where you can go in and if you're on Deal Machine Pro, you click in the top right corner on your profile, go down to team, and then you can invite, you know, I've got like Vince, for example, is my business partner or Elliot right here uh, is a driver only. You can just add leads and that's it. So he's a bird dog, can't touch the CRM or my billing or anything like that. He just simply add lead, adds leads for me. And, uh, you know, you can add people to your account to, to do that, you know, and drive for dollars with you and for you that way. So um, it's, a, it's a great way, especially for the more advanced investor, if they want to try to figure out like, how do I get all the pros, all the benefits of driving for dollars, but then save myself time, kind of buy my time back, right? Um, hiring a, a bird dog or, or, or trying to bring on somebody that can that can do this with you and for you. Uh, I'd highly, highly recommend that strategy. So cool. You get more wheels on the ground that way. Exactly. Yep. 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 So you're, and then, uh, you know, there's, I mean, I could do a whole follow-up training on how to find those folks and and train them and, and, you know, pay them and all that stuff. So I'm, I'm happy to answer questions if, uh, if uh, need be at any point, but um, you know, I'm, uh, that, that could be a future, future topic for us too. So Perfect. Uh, awesome. Cool. Uh, and Desmona uh, it is a, if you're on deal machine pro, you get three total users. So they actually don't have to even pay for deal machine if they're, if you're on pro there. So answer that question. Um, awesome. So, that was everything day one. Before I move on to day two, I want to answer your other two questions here. So you said, was it foreclosure data and then the cash buyer uh, data? That's what you're asking about, right? Well, uh, foreclosure data and then who owns the properties uh, on the street where my house is? Yes. Okay, cool. So uh, the foreclosure data that if you if you don't know where a data point in, in, is in here, guys, uh, basically on the map right here, if you scroll over to the more button, that's where you can really search for for anything that you know would fit all this criteria. You know, we've got 700 plus data filters to work with here. So if you click into more, and for example, foreclosure status is one right here. And we, I mean, we've even got yeah, like document type or you know, auction date. Like you've got a lot, a lot in here that you can look at. But simply looking at pre foreclosure, foreclosure bank owned, like you can you can filter properties that way as well. Um, so you can go in and, and kind of use this data to take action, uh, you know, in addition to driving for dollars and these other strategies we're using. And those work in non-disclosure states as well? Yeah, that's all, all 50 states. We've got that foreclosure okay. for you. Yep. People always tell me that doesn't work in Kansas, so that doesn't work in Missouri. I'm like, yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Try it out, guys. Okay, uh, jump in there and, and use it. Uh, so you've got uh, that. And then when it comes to figuring out um, kind of the, the dispo side or cash buyer side, uh, whether it be for Kim or anyone who's who's thinking about wholesaling or anything like that, um, you've got a couple options in here. So one, you're under quick filters. We do have cash buyers. So that would be like cash transactions here. That's, that'd be a big broad list if you really want to, to uh, you know dig into that. Um, if you want to get a little more targeted in your outreach, there's there's two particular filters I'd highly recommend. One under the more button, if you go and type in uh, owner is a house flipper, 
that's a really, really strong one. So that'd be a great one for, especially if you're wholesaling, like it's a great way to identify that and say, yeah, show me all the house flippers. And, you know, in this area, you've got one right here. Um, so you can zoom out and say, Hey, show me in, you know, six, three, one Oh nine, for example, um, all the house flippers, here's 13 that come up and, you know, these are 13 properties that are owned by a house flipper. So you could look on that property and look and figure out like, Hey, here's that individual, uh, you know, here's the, uh, you know, you can look and, uh, dig in on the, the owner data of every single one of these properties. Right. So, um, yeah, here you go. Three doors. So. Okay. Perfect. Cool. So that, that's one piece. The other one I would consider Kim too. If you click on more, uh, you can look and filter. Let me clear this out. You can filter by um, number of property. Let me see here. Number of owned properties. Here we go. So number of owned properties. So you could say is equal to, you know, is greater than or equal to 10, for example, and confirm that. And that way you're finding those people who do own, you know, the, uh, the, the you know, like you said, the, the, the handful that own a ton in town. Um, here, let me refresh this here real quick. And then, uh, that way you can be able to, same idea as you're going to look at the, the property owner data to be able to get in touch with that individual. But it's a great way to go in there and just basically find the ones that, that are, uh, you know, as a, oh, and you can do owner has multiple properties too, but, um, it's a great way to kind of identify those, those bigger players in your market. So greater than equal to 10 confirm great. And now we're down, let's see. Uh, 2,600 properties that are owned by owners that that own 10 or more. So um, I can get really specific in 63109 and then build that list and start going through that owner data. Excellent. Great. Any other questions here? Let me check the chat. Um, we have it. I think we're doing good. Yeah, you answered the bird dog fee that you can add up to three three people on the team if you're a pro and the pro. Yep, yep, yep. See, that's all, that's all included there. So. And then if you want 20 bird dogs, I'm sure there's an upgraded version of Deal Machine that would ac ac accommodate that. Yeah, we've got a Teams plan that you can add up to 15, I believe. So you've, yeah, you've got a lot of options there. What do we do with these leads? That's that's the here we go. That's the that's the real question here, right, guys? Is what do we do? What do we take that next step? How do we turn just these addresses into into real conversations, into deals, right? So Tonight, that's the goal here together, guys, is, is to market to and negotiate with motivated sellers, is reaching out to them and getting in front of them in a strategic way, build out a plan that scales, build out a build out a plan that really gives you the best shot of, of having that conversation. And and then I can again briefly touch on how to have that conversation, how to how to open that up with a with a seller and really uh, you know, really sort of have that problem solving mode on. So or problem solving hat on. And and really in the end, like. I, I want to put you in the mindset of we're not we're not a deal maker per se. We're not we're not convincing people who don't want to move that they need to move. We're a deal finder. We're looking for those people. We're finding those people that have a problem we can solve. We can bring a ton of value to the table as a real estate investor and help them move quickly and conveniently and as is and for cash and you know without commissions and like all these different things we can bring to the table. Um, you know when we when we go direct to seller like this and so. Um, when it comes to marketing and actually reaching out to these folks, um, what I can show you guys here, and I'll show you again in the in the uh, Deal Machine app. And you know, Kim, I love your perspective on this too. But um, there's a couple pro tips I want to start off with that we see across the board really increase your odds of success. Um, one would be if you can go out there and build a strategic marketing mix where you are having a couple different types of touch points with people. Um, it's better to to be good at one thing than be, you know, not great at a lot of things. Right. But, but still, if you're able to effectively execute in a couple different ways where you're having, you know, different touch points, whether it be, you know, uh, door knocking or, you know, putting flyers on the door or, you know, uh, cold calling or emailing or direct mail or wh whatever your marketing strategy is, if you can mix it up a little bit here where you're reaching out in a couple different ways um, we've seen it's kind of like a one plus one equals three or four, not a one plus one equals two in terms of those marketing strategies, because one, you're kind of starting to peer all over the place. You know, you're, you're reaching out and, you know, they're seeing you all over. They're like, who's this Matt guy or who's this, you know, Kim person like that. You really start to stand out more and you're reaching out in ways that, that, um, some people are going to answer a postcard versus a text or a call or an email or whatever the marketing method is. Again, 
that, you know, some people respond more effectively to, to, to their kind of preferred means of communication there. So um, when we, when we see, look at the data, like being able to reach out in a couple different ways really, really helps. And then the second thing is I highly recommend kind of a combo strategy of what we call one-to-one -one active marketing. So that would be like you reaching out and putting in the work to be able to one-to-one -to -one reach out to people. It's not as easy to automate. You can maybe outsource it, but it's not easy to, easy to automate. Um, but it is worth the time because you're going to get on their radar and, and get an answer and get some feedback right away from that individual. So kind of one-to-one -one active marketing. And then combine that with kind of a one-to-many passive marketing that you can automate, that you can set and forget and reach out, you know, over and over again and let it kind of do work in your sleep um, where you're reaching out a couple different ways. And the data to back that up as well is if you go out there and you guys did the homework, you know, a lot of you did. So awesome job. You did the homework. You turned that in. You've got 100 leads and you actually found the right leads. You have somebody who's who's going to sell they're looking to sell and they're, you know, kind of getting fielding those, you know, they're, 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 they're open opportunities, right? They're open to conversations. If you've only, if you've done all that right and they're going to actually transact and you only reach out one time, just from a data perspective, only like 12% of the time are you actually getting in touch with them and having a great, having a, a real at bat a conversation with them. If you reach out three times, just statistically, it's like 47% of the time, are you actually getting the conversation with them? And so that what that means is that, hey, reaching out in a couple different ways and being consistent, staying top of mind. So that way, when they are ready and you you have reached out in a couple different ways and you are on their radar, that is what's going to give you that real opportunity to go do deals and, 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 and be the one that they call when the time is right. And so just from a from a pure data perspective, that's what we want to try to share first. But Kim, how do you think about marketing? <laughs> well, I my first training course I purchased was to wholesale property. So it was like, buy the list, like we built our list already, and to mail them this postcard and that postcard and that postcard. And I got my list and I mailed it and nobody responded. And I was so dejected and life got in the way and I didn't do anything with it for six months. And then I'm like, okay, we paid for this. Let's try it again. I did the exact same mailing, exact I actually went to postcard number two or whatever, the second postcard, and we got three leads off of it. And we bought our first wholesale house, sold it to the neighbor, made 12 grand. But if I wouldn't have mailed the second time, nothing would have happened. And I've learned that over and over that you have to keep, not that you have to mail a lot. I mean, some people get really worried about, oh, what am I mailing? I'm like, well, it, when you're getting started, just do it. Mail them something and get it out there. So you start talking to people, you start getting the feel, then you can tweak stuff and make it better as you go on down the road. But if you're waiting till you have the perfect letter, the perfect postcard, the yep. perfect lead behind, the perfect message, well, I haven't got perfect anything yet and I haven't figured out how to do that. So we just yeah. we'll get it done. <laughs> there isn't one. I mean, if there's something perfect, everybody would do it, right? So it's, it's like, hey, we can just share with you statistically how do you how do you do the right build the right habits do the right things so that way statistically you have the best chance of having that conversation and 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 no matter what the the marketing messaging says or the postcards and stuff you can test out different things and learn that along the way but but the underlying value here the underlying lesson is that getting out there and getting as many at bats as possible with the right people is what's going to put you long term uh, in the in the a bucket of, of more likely to be successful like that so. Um, there, there's a couple ways in Deal Machine that I want to teach you guys how to execute on this, how to do that, that you know, marketing mix, and then how to do the active and passive marketing in in tandem. You know, the one to one and the one to many in tandem. Um, so I can show you guys that on the demo here tonight. Really show you a couple different options here, and then um, the fact that we have so much data between property data. Um, owner data, like demographic data, and then the contact information, all of that combined uh, is really going to put you at kind of that unfair advantage in your market. You've got everything you need to come in there and have a way better conversation and way more likely to get in touch with that owner than the average investor would. There's the average newbie, anybody who's reaching out cold. So um, let me try to share my screen here. No other questions there, Kim, it doesn't look like. Um, 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 I know you showed us uh, last week, but uh, the question was, how do we export our list? Um, but we can do a lot of our follow-up okay, yeah. right 
inside a deal machine, but if we wanted to put it in to Excel, I'm sure there's a way to do that. Yep. So uh, one example here. So I think it might've been this one here. Okay. We'll work with this 180 leads here. Um, this is what I pulled, you know, I, I uh, was, Oh, I, okay. I was showing that off a little bit last time. So here's a, here's a good example. So 180 leads right here. Um, if you want to import or export a list in deal machine, you can just simply click the add leads button right here. You've got a little import list button and all you need is literally just the addresses. So if you just have an Excel sheet, or CSV file uh, that's just addresses right there. You can upload that list with one click. It lines that up and then it backfills all the data from there. So it'll include, you know, all, everything around the contact information, the property data, the, the owner data, all everything else. All you need is those addresses and the rest is, is right there for you. Um, so that'll all backfill. And then to export your leads, you can just select them all right here go to lead actions. And then if you scroll down, you've got an export leads uh, button right there. So um, that would do the same kind of thing. We just put it in an Excel file for you. And if we have our list and we've got it all put together and as we're doing direct mail or calling and we discover that the phone number doesn't work or the address is wrong, is there a way to change that on our list or, or are we kind of stuck with what the data gives us? Yeah, what I recommend, I, I love our tagging system inside Deal Machine. So like, for example, any any lead you click on, you can go up here to tags and add a tag. So things like uh, high priority, I tag that. So like, for example, if you were driving around and there were highlights on the map and you added that and it was in bad shape, right? So you added that lead, I would tag it high priority. Um, asked to be removed, I always include that. Or you could put like wrong number. You can actually create any kind of tag you would like here. Um, and that's super, super helpful to just be able to, to just tag the property under that particular category. And then um, obviously, you know, when you're in this leads view right here, you can then filter by tags. So you can go in here and filter and say, hey, show me all the high priority leads here uh, uh, that I should go after first. Right. Um, so I, I use a tagging system is, is a great way to kind of just build custom lists and make sure I'm really organized. OK. And I like the one that said uh, to cold call because their letter came back. Return to sender. Yes, return to senders are, are great. Yep, uh, that's it's like a golden ticket of hey, you know what? People aren't getting through with mail. If if I can actually get in touch with them calling, like they're highly likely not going to be a very competitive lead. Like let's let's go do that. You know, I need to call call these. There we go. Yep, perfect. <laughs> we went through. We taught you on the map how to add leads, right? So this leads tab here is really where you're going to be spending a lot of time for the marketing portion for the second the second portion. Um, one thing I want to point out right away is in terms of that one-to-one -one active marketing, uh, you do have the option to drive a list of leads as well. So if you ever wanted to, say you were driving for dollars and you build this whole list or you pulled a list based on our data and you want to sit down and you're like, okay, great. I want to go, you know, uh, door knocking, or I want to go, um, put a flyer on the door or, put a sticky note on the door, any kind of in-person touch point, you do have the option. And this is, on, this is on our pro plan. You do have the option to drive a list. So I could then go here and, you know, for example, my list right here, 180 leads. If I go to lead actions and hit drive this list right here, that is what's going to take me and give me turn by turn navigation to every single property on this entire list. And so, you know, when you're driving for dollars, if you have the chance to be able to door knock or do in-person touch points while driving for dollars, great. You know, that uh, you may not be in a position to be able to do that super easily. Um, this drive a list feature can be super helpful for that. Or even if you have uh, somebody who's like a bird dog, for example, and you want them to put door, door hangers on the door, they can go drive a list like this. So um, it's a super helpful uh, way to just save time and route yourself around an area. And inside the mobile app, it's just that, that again, that bottom left corner, that drive for leads button, similar to where you were finding dr virtual driving for dollars, right? That that option right there at the bottom, there's a uh, drive a list feature. And so that's where it'll give you, again, turn by turn navigation to the fastest route possible. And it'll even give you an estimate like these 180 leads. It thinks it's going to take me five hours and 51 minutes to go drive that route. So um, the one-to-one -one marketing, if you want to do, again, the door knocking, flyer on the door, anything in person like that. Uh, drive a list feature, very helpful for that. Now, the other thing that is built into Deal Machine right away when it comes to this active one-to-one -one marketing you can be doing, uh, 
you know, I, you may have noticed, I'll tell you real quick here. You may have noticed as you scroll down and, you know, here's, here's one example here. I've got a bunch of phone numbers right here, right? Uh, you know, mo most of these have phone numbers. Let me expand this to hundred so you can kind of see the full list here. So you've got all these phone numbers on the right side of deal machine. And traditionally, this is, you know, before about a year ago is when we launched this before then you'd have to go in and any platform in the industry, you'd have to go pay typically 10 to 12 cents per property to go do what is called skip tracing, right? And that, that would be pinging a database and getting phone numbers and emails associated with past owners of that property. And usually you'd get like 10 plus phone numbers, you know, a bunch of phone numbers that you, you know, one of them might be right, but you got to go through the whole list to figure that out. And now you've got all this data. Okay, great. Well, now I have to go upload it into a dialer and, and, you know, buy this dialer and learn how to use that. And just the whole process was very cumbersome and very expensive. Um, about a year ago, it was last November here, we launched our unlimited free skip tracing feature inside Deal Machine. And so you'll see here, again, it was 10 cents, 12 cents per property to be able to go get this information. Now inside Deal Machine, even with your free trials, you know, you've got, for example, I've got 14,000 leads that would normally be like 1,400, 1,500 bucks to, to get that contact information. That's just included free in Deal Machine now. So we, we've been saving people hundreds of dollars, if not thousands a month uh, per user, a lot of times if they're doing this at high volume, to jump in and just have all these phone numbers ready to go and ready to run with. And so we launched that end of last year, really trying to kind of change the industry of how people pay for data. And now the next thing that we kept hearing was, okay, great, we've got all these phone numbers, well, make it easy for us to call them, like to actually reach out to those folks and, and, you know, not just have these numbers here, but be able to actually, you know, click and call. And so in deal machine here, we, you know, we used to uh, have people uh, export all these numbers and upload them into a dialer and learn how to use a dialer and pay for a dialer and all that stuff. Now in deal machine, you just have a little click to call button right there. And if you hit this top one, it's going to start dialing through your list immediately. If not, you can just click any of these individual phone numbers. And the exciting things of uh, you know of this is is that yeah, uh, it, it's easy to use, and it's you know most dialers are going to cost you a couple hundred bucks a month to be able to to call. So you know, you're saving that there, and it's again the simplicity of it that's set up ready to go is fantastic. Um, but you also have, like I mentioned, you, you have all this demographic data, you have all this property data, you know, the owner of the, the LLC that owns it, you know, the, the individual that owns that LLC, you know, things like, you know, the equity, the, uh, um, you know, uh, mortgage, mortgage data, lien data, um, land information, tax transaction history, all of this stuff right here for you to be able to tap into and just make it super easy to do your due diligence, come, come in there with great questions to ask and know again, like what are some potential, uh, pain points that you might be able to solve for this individual what, you know, without having to scour the internet for that. So you've got all that right there for you, ready to have great conversations with sellers and that again, that's kind of that unfair advantage in your market is the intersection of all of having every single contact, you know, the, the way to get in touch with them, the phone numbers, the demographic data about those individuals and and then the, the property data all ready to go. And he like for for example, the pro the uh the demographic data, if you just click on this individual, here's that right there for you. You can see things like you know, background, you can see things like portfolio data. Um, you know, professional information. So that's why I mean, you can come in and do that, that, dem that, uh, that due diligence before even making a phone call. So all that's built in right there for you. The dialer itself, this is really, really cool. Uh, if you're going to make you know cold calls this way, when you click that call button, what it's going to do is one, it will mirror the area code. So it'll give you a 314 num number. If I'm calling a 314, this one at 217. When I call that person, we also have kind of a, a spam checking service, a cleaning service in the background. So before we ever hand off a phone number to you, we double check, hey, does this come up as spam or not? And if it doesn't, great, we you know, hand it over. Uh, when you make that phone call, inside Deal Machine, it is associating that lead in your account with that person. So Abigail here, if I call her, it's going to give me a 217 number. And it knows that if Abigail, specifically Abigail, calls that number back, that for, that's my account in Deal Machine. So it'll automatically route that to my callback number, which in your dialer settings up here, if you click on your profile and then application settings, dialer settings right here, 
that is where you can come in here and set your callback number and be able to say, yeah, I wanted to ring my you know, business line or my personal cell or, or my Google voice number, whatever it might be. So it'll automatically route that to you if they call that number back. Uh, the other pieces of this is that this dialer, uh, it is an AI powered dialer, meaning that it's got a ton of AI elements built into it, even if you're not you know, a big, uh, you know, AI user or use chat GPT all the time or anything like that. We just want to make it again, really intuitive and use it as kind of a super productivity tool. So for examples of this is when you actually make a phone call, if I were to call Chris right here, it would show a live transcription of the call for me in real time. So it would say, here's what Chris is saying. Here's what Matt's saying. Here's what Chris is saying. And it'll go back and forth. That is a note taker as well. So when you're all done, it just stores those notes inside that particular property. You can revisit that transcription right there, see how that call went word for word. It has a call summary for you at the top. So it'll say, like, for example, here, let me find a past conversation. So like with Ryan down here, here is my transcription back and forth of the call with Ryan. Here is the tra the uh, call summary. So it's an AI-based call summary of, hey, you confirmed ownership. You mentioned it needs a new roof. It's been vacant. We set an appointment. I um, mean, wants to stop paying taxes. So it, it kind of gives you all of the highlights right there. It makes it really easy for you. Um, and if they call you back, again, it pops up. You know, you get inbound calls and text messages inside Deal Machine right there. So that way you know to, to call or text them back right there. Um, inside all that as well, it's going to give you a recommended next step. So the AI is doing a, uh, a uh, really kind of uh, sentiment analysis of the call. And based on keywords that are in there, it knows, hey, you set an appointment or they're interested in selling someday. They're a warm lead. They're not a hot lead per se, uh, or they didn't answer their phone. And based on those, those recommended next steps, you can actually go in your settings here and tell, tell the dialer that, hey, you know what? They don't answer. Remind me in 30 days, put it back in my my call queue to, to follow up with them. Or if they said they want to sell someday, just remind me every two weeks to, to touch base with them. Or if it's a hot lead every other day, like it gives you that kind of that kind of uh, recommended next step and then automated follow up. Or when I jump in deal machine, I click on my follow up button and now I can see in my queue. Here's how many phone calls I need to make. And I can just quickly you know do that automated follow up that next step to stay top of mind at the exact right time with all these leads here. And so it's got all of those elements built into it as well. And then the final thing here I really want to touch on from an AI perspective, and again, I'll, you know, we'll, uh, we'll touch on what, how to have the conversation with the seller as well. But when you make a phone call, what it's going to do is it will actually pull up the dialer right there. And I'll show you guys here for a sec in a second, but it'll pull up the dialer right there and it'll actually give you a little button right there. It's our AI assistant built into the phone call. And it says, what do I say next? And based on that button, you click that button, it will give you recommendations in the call of where to take that conversation. So it'll say, hey, if I called Stacy, it'll say, hey, introduce yourself this way or uh, ask Stacy about the condition of the property or why she's looking to sell or when she's looking to sell. Like it'll give you recommended uh, ways to take the conversation. So that way, if you just are not comfortable doing this, don't know how to have a conversation like this, don't know where to take it. You've always got that prompt to work from. And I'm not saying read it, you know, always read the script or anything, but it's a great way to kind of help guide you in real time of how to have a great conversation with the end goal of booking an appointment and purchasing the property. So you've got all of that right there for you built into Deal Machine with this dialer uh, using, you know, the power of kind of our, our AI assistant based on, on top of everything else. So um, so if we were going to export it, perhaps there, I've got two people asking how you export. And I know you just showed us, but they're having, they can't get it to work. So I'm wondering if they can't export if they're on a free trial. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah. So the exports, that is true that, uh, it wouldn't be during the free trial itself that you'd be, be able to export all of your leads only because, uh, we've had people <laughs> basically take advantage of that, of like exporting, you know, thousands of leads and then just starting free trials over and over again doing that. So that was the one thing we did have to crack down on was exports during the free trial. But that being said, if you see enough value in the tool and become a paying customer that way, um, you know, hopefully that, that helps there. So, but, but where was the export list to do that? If you select the list, then it pops up. 
Uh, let's see if you select the list and then hit the lead actions and export leads right there. Okay. Um, that's where you'd be able to do that. So Perfect. Here, here's what it looks like too, as well. So if you click call, I'll hang up right away, but here's that, here's the kind of interface. Here's that, what should I say button? If I hang up, here we go. Oh, there you go. Um, here's that recommended, you know, Hey, I could say this. Or I could, you know, I could try again, get another another prompt for me. I hung up. Yep, no answer. Um, here's more data about the property itself. Here's more about the user themselves, um, or the uh, the uh, uh, property owner rather themselves. And so you've got all that data to work with during the call right there to kind of help guide that conversation. So um, yeah, that's kind of what the uh, what the data looks like there for you. So all right, awesome. So with all of that right there again. Combine that with your long-term strategy of, you know, being able to go and, and not just have this one-to-one -one active marketing, but then the one-to-many passive marketing. And so what that looks like there for you too is go in and uh, simply go to your mail tab and click on uh, postcards. And you've got about 15 or 16 or so default templates to work from. Um, all kinds of different sizing. You've got handwritten letters here, ballpoint letters to work with. Um, you've got, uh, you can go in there, customize it according to whatever pain point you're trying to solve. So if they, you know, if they are low equity and you want to offer, you know, X, Y, Z, you know, type of creative, uh, creative problem solving for them, um, you can include that in the design of the postcards, but I'll say the vast majority of the deals done using deal machine have been using these default postcards right here. So, um, you can, you've got all that set up, ready to go for you. And then once you have those postcard templates ready to go, uh, you can put them in different sequences, meaning like, hey, you know, send them this postcard design then this one then this one and send it every 21 days or once a month. And you can just kind of preset that whole sequence for you. Once you've got all that ready to go, again, this is you know, your whole goal with this strategy is just to generate leads in your sleep here, right? It's like Kim had mentioned, it's, it's about how can we uh, not just send one mail blast to them and spend all this time on one, but you know, set it and repeat it and let it let, let, let you be the one that's top of mind when they're ready to sell. Like I can't tell you how many leads I've had call us where they're like, yeah, you've been mailing us the last six months. You know, like they're, you know, they're, they're uh, impressed with our follow-up. I'll say <laughs> it's where we're, oh, we're ready to get that call back. So I've had, I've had people say you're the only person that's mailed more than once. Yep. And then I've had people call me that, there, I'd mailed a whole bunch of times and grandma had saved every one of my mailing. And when grandma passed away, the family found this whole stack of letters from me in some important place and the important papers. And then they called me because she had all these letters and she'd saved them. <laughs> had that go. happen uh, quite a few times. Yep. Yep. So I, I think uh, in general, you know, that uh, the goal with this strategy is the one to many. It's how do we automated so that way we're putting ourselves in that that statistical likelihood of getting that call back right so um you see you'll see this like start mail button across all of your leads or at the top of your list here too and when you hit start mail that's when you can really customize it too and go in and, and say hey i want to send them you know this postcard sequence or this individual design and then uh, change all of that and, and customize it according to you know the, the templates and sequences that you just created and you can be able to say oh yeah i'm going to send them you know, this postcard and make it, uh, you know, every, every 21 days for 12 times. And then when I hit start mail, it'll just automatically fire that out for you. You don't have to press anything else. You just, again, set it and forget it. And you're, you're going to be ready to, to take that phone phone call when it comes in from there. So, um, when it comes to long-term strategy, again, we want to make it simple and easy. It's just the, the goal is how do we identify these leads, reach out to them in a, in a marketing mix, stay top of mind and consistently follow up. So that way you are the one that stands out in your market and that you're the one that they think of when it is time to sell. So, um, so in their free trial, they have 50 postcards they can send. Yes. So in the free trial, you've got actually about 500 free dialer minutes, like calling minutes in there, um, which basically in Deal Machine, you've got your subscription and then you've got your kind of usage based on sending postcards or making phone calls. So um, the calls are a couple cents a minute. The postcards are 50 to 60 cents is kind of like our, our standard postcard. Um, so you get about 50 postcards free um, and or uh, those 500 call minutes just ready to go lined up and, and, uh, you know, ready for you to kind of take action on your homework there. So, so that, that's what we're going to do tomorrow. 
Yes. So, so what it looks like for the rest of this, yeah. So I'll show you guys this here. Um, what I do want to touch on on those cold calls before I sign the homework, just briefly, I did want to mention like, hey, you know, here's what that initial conversation could look like, and here's really what the the AI guide is gonna gonna help teach you as you go through this. When you hit that, what do I say next button? Is introducing yourself. You know, for example, hey, great, this is Matt. I know this calls out of the blue, but I was calling about a property you own at x address which you have that data in front of you uh, we buy houses in the area wanted to see if you consider an offer on your property as simple as that you don't have to overthink it there's plenty of ways you can introduce yourself but being able to kind of get their interest at the beginning of that call um is, is your end goal is to just to be able to get that next 30 seconds in right um and then when you actually get that going it's okay ask them around mctp motivation so you know why they're looking to sell condition. So have they done any work to it recently? Uh, timeline on when they're looking to sell and then price point that they're thinking about and then book that appointment like that. That's kind of the high level framework that that I think uh, both the AI system will give you and it's just a great way to kind of just lead with those open ended questions. And especially if you have that property data in front of you to figure out, oh, man, they're they're you know, they're they're uh, they own, they've owned it for a long time or they X, Y, Z, like it kind of gives you that, that summary, that digestible summary coming in. Um, you'll just be more prepared with even more, uh, great questions to ask. So, um, Tim, do you have any advice on this piece on like how to have the conversation with the seller? Well, I'm going to say you you've got a lot of that data mm -hmm. and for example, I would look at your data before you jump in because you might find it was just deeded to them from grandma or just deeded them from their parents. So then you know that this an inherited property or that they, you know, that they've owned it a long time, but they don't live in the property. So it might be a rental property. So, you know, key questions to ask around that. But I am not a good cold calling person. I don't do a lot of cold calling, but I know when we, we do reach out really personally, we're looking for a property in the area. Uh, my, my son has bought many properties in his neighborhood because he's caught, he's he's buying in his subdivision where he lives and he does this. He calls up and he doesn't really approach them so much as a real estate investor as he's, uh, I'm buying houses in your area. Are you thinking about selling? And, hey. and then start the conversation from there. And if they say no, well, then you go on. Yeah. You're right where you were. So, uh, yeah, that's that's a great. I mean, you don't have to overthink it. Think about it as casual as that, and uh, just give you that real easy dialer to to be able to make calls like that. So, um, awesome. So, final homework assignment here. You may have caught on to the theme. Uh, you know, today last time it was building that list. Today, it's taking that list that you have built and making this outreach effort here. So reach out to those hundred leads that were on your driving for dollars list. And that could be through this phone call, you know, phone calling. It could be through, you know, putting something in person like a door hanger or door knocking. It could be, we've got email addresses in there for individuals. You can reach out that way. You've got postcards you can send. You've got a ton of things at your disposal to work with, but the goal is just to reach out with this playbook that we gave you today. And, and that's really it is we want you to get out there and again, lead with action. With that, if you don't mind, Kim, putting this link in the chat one more time too, is just dealmachine.com slash office hyphen hours. Uh, that is going to be a really helpful resource for people um, tomorrow and Wednesday afternoon. So um, one o'clock Eastern time, Ryan's going to be on both of those days, ready to answer your questions. We Again, we do have a support chat that gets back to you in five minutes or less during business hours. So you've got that too. Um, but in addition to that, wanted to make sure that you've got this at your disposal and and can speak directly to our head of customer success. So um, all good to go right there. Uh, trying to give you as, as many resources as possible. I know Kim shared the YouTube link earlier as well. Um, we've got a YouTube playlist that has a ton of demos in there. So you can kind of search that for, for any questions around particular features. But um, otherwise, guys, you, you know, happy deal finding. started running it first thing today. So today, just today, we got, oh, it's over 20. I believe it was 21 total, but he never gave me a final. So that's so crazy. I mean, it's the fastest way I've ever seen to, to pick up appointments. So he built that out for us. So I just called my guy down in Texas. He's one of my business partners and he's running all that. And he gets uh, a commission off all of our appointments through 
yeah. on the construction side, helping, you know, set this whole system up. And I was like, Hey, I want to try this. And I got him logged in. He's on my team in my account. And I was like, yeah, see what you can do. And he went and started loading it up and got it all done wow. yesterday and ran it this morning. And he was like, you know, he called me and he's like, dude, it, it went really well. I was like, did you get some? He goes, no, we didn't get some. We've got like 20 something. I was <laughs> like, what? You're shitting me. He goes, no, dude, it's, I'm, I'm going to have you booked. I'm like, holy crap. Man, okay. That's, that is legit. I love it. <laughs> Thank you, man. I'm like really excited about this system. I was telling her I've used it all, dude. Property radar, prop stream. This is better than all those. I'm really, really excited about this system. So. Thank you, man. Yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. What What do you think? What's What's been like your biggest takeaway of what why it's working so well? Like what makes it uh, different in your opinion? Oh, hands down. I know what makes it different because I've used the other ones. Um, the numbers are most of these numbers are good. Um, when I've used uh, property radar, the biggest thing I ran into, the biggest adversary, if you will, they're kind of twofold. There's two different reasons it was a problem for me. The first one is you have to hand take every single one out of that system. Mm -hmm. You have to, it's kind of a, a, a long process to get to the phone number. Mm -hmm. And I, I, it's, it's hard to explain. Basically, you click on the, the address, you have to click on the profile, then you click on the phone, then you have to unlock it with your credits, and then you pull it up, and then you have the phone number, then you have to hand put it into our caller. It just wasn't working. So yeah. that's why this got my attention. So that's the first part is it's super easy to pull these out, even though we had to do it manually this time because we we're still on the free trial. So we couldn't do it, which that's going to make it even faster. But anyway, so that's part of it. The other part of it is the numbers are actually good. Um, we have mm -hmm. a major issue with prop, the, their, their numbers are like, there's like a 50% chance they're not even good numbers. And yeah. the large majority of the stuff coming through here, um, it, it's just, it's worked. They've been good numbers. They're up to date. They're current. You know, so that's a that's obviously helpful when you're actually talking to the owner. So, wow, that's I mean, so for us, uh, I'll say that that is awesome to hear, just especially because hey, uh, we spent quite a bit on trying to make sure we have high quality data, spe for, uh, more than anything, the contact info like that. Um, so I, I always get, you know, super excited hearing the, uh, you know, people going out there testing it and having that great experience with us. Um, especially cause we, you know, our, the, the biggest thing is when we launched it and, and said, Hey, it's going to be free contact info, like free skip tracing for everybody. Um, that we had, we knew we had to have quality data or, or it wouldn't matter. Like people, if people came in yeah. and it's, but it's, but it's terrible. Then like, you know, what do you, what is it worth really? Right. Um, so we really doubled down on the quality of that. And I know, well, I, I had an aha too. I, I jumped on, mm -hmm. I, I, whenever I get into something like this online, I'm always trying to get help and you always have to go through the chat bot or you have to send a message and wait for something to come back. Mm -hmm. Um, I think you have uh three or four days a week that you have office hours. And yep. I was just trying to get the link right to give it to somebody. And I jumped on and there was 12 people on there asking questions. Um, and they were yep. getting detailed answers. So I was very impressed well, if I, you know, if I, if I can't figure something out, I can get on there and get help. Uh, we already started jumping into this. Uh, Kim, any other takeaways that you had, um, you know, over these seven days or anybody else? Uh, my takeaway is Matt's 21 leads. So. <laughs> yeah, that's massive. That's huge. And, um, but he did take massive action. He didn't go and ma make 50 calls. So I know we've contacted at least, I don't know, three, 400 people. So I can get the totals and send them over and let everyone I mean, see them. I'm, I mean, uh, I'm that. So that could, that would still be what a, a five to 10%, uh, you know, lead rate per very high, still, yeah, way higher than awesome. we get. Really. That's yeah. why we're not, we're all kind of looking at like, Holy cow. Why was that so high? It worked really, really well. So, yeah. Amazing, man. So that, that for dollars been, well. yeah. Yeah. Did, did anybody else, uh, really have any, any takeaways or, or any like really uh, exciting results they could uh, could share with the group or anything, or even if you just made one phone call, that's a win, right? You're like getting for closer and closer to a deal. Eddie, did you have anything? Or <laughs> yeah, man, um, it works really, really well. I've used this. I I wrote off Deal Machine like a few months ago. Like I tried, it was very glitchy, like going driving for deals, and I was like, crap. Pen and paper seems to be the best thing, but you know, since going through this. And everything. I also update my phone. It could have been that too. I don't know. Um, but um, it works really, really well. Like um, I was able to really mark down uh, places that I've already been. I haven't yet worked out the um, where it traces my steps or something like that. It keeps saying, "Hey, change your right, settings right. or background." Yeah. And I'm like, I'm looking, can't find that. But otherwise, like it will mark the house where I'm at. Or because okay. sometimes it's very hard to figure out what 
property you're at because like the like one property right next to it and the one you're looking at don't have numbers readily available and then the ones next to it you can't really trust because sometimes the house numbers skip like six or 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 eight numbers i'm like okay i i see 44 46 what was 44 46 why is it now in 60 like way where, where happened to these numbers things like that like i got properties all over and there um it's very interesting like i got one um is 8720 the next the next house right next to me is 8726 i'm like what the heck so it was very <laughs> helpful with um because again you can see from the map the shape of the properties or if you're like okay cool i was at the end yeah. corners the third one from the end yep this is the house so it helps um it's very accurate um and also calling like pressing the button calling really easy i didn't have to like go back try and skip trace anywhere else most of them worked and the ones that didn't i'll take a look and see with my regular skip tracing if it's the same numbers or not but i'm pretty sure it's pretty comparable to uh anywhere else and and sometimes if you're looking at a if, if you're looking at a bad house probably either someone's dead so that's probably why if you look up their number it don't work or if they can't afford to fix up their property they might not be you know they be, might be struggling with uh paying their phone bill as well so i don't i think of uh, the accuracy if the numbers are there uh, they're there most likely Yeah. You know, I think, um, you know, a lot of good pro tips there. I mean, well, one, uh, in terms of the driving for dollars piece, if you tried it a little while ago, you know, when we, uh, when we're adding new, you know, one thing about adding new things is that you kind of add new stuff and then you have to make sure you also go back and, and refine the performance of every other piece. Um, so, you know, we always have like a innovation period and, and a, a refinement period as well. So we're kind of like going, you know, always back and forth there. Um, so, you, you know, maybe you caught it during like some updates or, you know, updating your having the latest version of a phone always go helps a ton with really just mobile apps in general for performance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so hopefully that helped. I, you know, if you go and you figure out your background location, one other pro tip is on, you know, when you're on the map there, the top there you left, go. there's that. Yeah, it does that. The ba your, your background is turned yeah. off. Yeah, I couldn't figure out how to do yeah. that. Yeah. So you'll you'll have to like go to your settings and, and basically turn it on for, for when the app's on. Um, there, there is a little, uh, camera button. I don't know if you can kind of see that little yeah, see the camera button. So yeah. that, when you click on that too, it's like an augmented reality mode essentially. So when you point mm -hmm. your phone at the house, it'll actually pull up the address of the house that way too. Um, so it's like a, uh, directional based way of adding leads and making sure you have the right property. Um, so we've seen people like have success with that. Obviously, if you're driving, that's going to be a little bit tougher, right? Uh, like that's that's pretty good if you've got like somebody in in you know in shotgun with you and they can use that that mode. Um, but just another kind of pro tip of ways to make sure you're adding the right house too. So, um, yeah, my bad. I was, my mind was blown for a second there. I had to put it back together. That's crazy. I like that. As <laughs> yeah, well. it's something that that's new word too. And yeah, it basically uses like directional what you're doing on your phone and then pulls over and says. Here's, you know, the address of this house you're looking at. So, um, yeah, I'd, I'd recommend it. <laughs> that's um, cool. But, okay. yeah, man. So, uh, that's awesome. I mean, I love love you kind of going through all that. It's, uh, you know, the skip tracing piece, too. That's something that I know the contact info, like, we did a ton of testing on that. And I'll say, there, you know, there's nothing nothing better out there uh, in terms mm -hmm. of accuracy from, from our testing. So, we're, and we're, again, always trying to prove that, take that to the next level. So, uh, check out that unveiled event and you're going to, I think you'll uh, be very happy with that too. So, yeah. And it was pretty cool. Cause I just used my phone, like I pressed the button and was able to make some phone call right then and there. So yep. it um, yep. helped out tremendously just to take immediate action. Oh, see the property. Let me do that. Or even with me reverse driving for deals, since I do a lot of pre foreclosure knocks, it's like, cool, typing in the address. And I've been looking now to try and find the best way to type in all the addresses. And then like, it tell me where, which ones to go the, the route to go to make it more efficient as well with door knocking. So nice, um, helped out a ton and, and everything like that. And also save me some time with not having to door knock some just because I'm able to quickly press a button on the drive there and be like, Oh, you're good. Okay. Or, no. Oh, you're not here. I'm dropping by, you know, so being able to hit that with accuracy is pretty great. Man, hey, I'd love to see, uh, let's see you guys take an action like this. That's what it's all about, right? Like we can go, teach you guys every single night what you hypothetically should be doing, but not until you actually mm -hmm. go out, and follow through and, and uh, put some work in. Uh, does it, does it really make you know, matter? Right. So it's all, again, congrats to all you guys. 
for taking that step for for taking these seven days serious and um you know we're gonna be a resource for uh you know a long time to come uh you know not just these seven days so um good good stuff eddie uh Awesome. Feel free, guys. Keep putting wins in the chat. You know, anything around uh, how much progress you made, you know, any lessons you learned. Um, it's always it's a great time to just kind of crowdsource that knowledge and, and share with each other of, you know, pro tips and things that are working for you. And, and that's how we all get better together. Right. So um, fantastic. The, again, this challenge was all about giving you that playbook to go direct to seller. You know, that's our mission is to give everyone the power of real estate investing using technology. And the more that we can teach you guys, hey, here's what's working in today's market, the more effective you guys can be at that. Um, you know, again, we've had over 10,000 deals done using Deal Machine um, based on this playbook. That's what this challenge came from is listening to you guys, what's working and and try to share that, uh, you know, with with uh, with our customer base. So um, came from people like Ryan here that we talked about each day. You know, he went through a, a 30 day version of this and on day 17, he did a deal. So everybody who went through the seven day version, keep going like, keep, you know, maybe, uh, you know, by day 17 here, we can we can get some uh, some deals under our belt. Right. Um, and then Patrick Martin was another one who, again, had no experience in real estate, uh, went to kind of this YouTube university, right? Like uh, went out there and, and, and taught himself a lot of this stuff um, and ended up doing 14 deals in his first 10 months uh, of actually going out there and taking action. So um, that that was our goal with that. But what I want to start off with is, is a quick training recap, just briefly cover again how to build that list briefly, any you know, quick quick pro tips from uh, for people, um, you know, the marketing side as well. Just really touch on that again um, for anybody who wasn't there or if you were there, great. Get in one more rep of what you can be doing, what you should be doing, how to how to how to think about this in the right way. And then I'll get to the new stuff, which is how to how to really close that deal with confidence by using a couple different tools to follow up with leads, always stay top of mind and uh, know know about like you know what to offer that 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 kind of offer number how to how to get to that max level offer with a with a seller there. So um Eddie, you had a question there? Go ahead, man. Hey, how are you doing this expired listings? Um I see <laughs> the expired listing feature. Yeah. So we've got MLS data in there as well. Um so you you can look at on market uh activity. Like you can look at Listed properties, you know, expired listings, days on market, you know, uh, agent information about who's listing and all that kind of stuff. Is it that's in there too? But but really, with this specific challenge, we really focus on the off market stuff. Oh, I get it. No, I was, that's why I was saying that. Yeah, yeah, expired because sometimes we'll um, I call them them just to be able to uh, you know sometimes offer uh, seller financing deals, things like that. Because mm -hmm. sometimes people want what they want as far as the number yeah. goes, but they're like. Oh, yeah. I didn't think about the tax ramification. Yeah, I'll take this deal at this rate, whatever. So I was just yeah. wondering because I have MLS access. If I'm already paying for this, there's no reason you might save me a hundred bucks here. Exactly. So I'm, yeah. I'm just like, how accurate is this? Like, is it now? Is it off of once it goes, it just reports what um, was on the MLS, like through Zillow or actually on the MLS, and then what goes away, like after it expires, or is it just like taking MLS? Uh, access to expired listings and when it's reports that it's expired says expired on the both ends. I will say um, in general, our property data is updated daily, like system wide um, for that specific use case. If you email me, I'll make sure I'll just loop in our head of, head of uh, product, Dan on our team. Okay. Okay. And you know, he's got again, like, you know, 700, 800 da different data points here that he can really go through and knows, Hey, here's how, you know, here's where it's coming from and all that kind of stuff. So um, yeah. And any data specific questions on like, where are you getting this data point or that one? Um, mm -hmm. I'm happy mm -hmm. with Dan to, uh, to make sure that I get you the right information there, man. But that's all uh, right, man. You, you uh, answered an even better question is how accurate is it? And you're like, Oh, I do is we scrape it daily. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, I'm definitely yeah. no longer, yeah. you just saved me a hundred bucks. Great. Well, what we were looking at again, just again, that those training recaps, you know, the first day was all about building that list of motivated sellers, you know, getting out there and identifying the most motivated sellers in your market by driving. Um, then after day one, we then kicked over to day, day uh, what, four? four? It was right in the middle, right? It was Monday of uh, how do you market to and negotiate with sellers? Day five. There we go. Thank you, Kim. Uh, how do you market to and negotiate with sellers? And really the some of the main principles of that, uh, we talked about one, um, you know, you want to take your 100 driving for dollars leads. You know, we, we made that first goal. Um, and, and the reason why we told you that is when we look at the data, that that number 100 is kind of the magic number of we know if you guys go out there, 
build your 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 list of 100 leads that you are statistically way way more likely to have long term success with this strategy because you're starting to get momentum. You're seeing you know Matt and you're seeing Eddie. You're seeing these people get traction. You're starting to see hey this this works right. It's just a matter of putting in the work and it's not a matter of if it'll happen. It's when it'll happen. So getting those reps in by going out there and 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 doing this over and over. We know if you can get to the number 100, again, you are way more likely to stick with this and see the long-term picture. Um, you may even do a deal on those first 100 leads, but uh, you know the goal is to help you you know, continue to do more and more and more deals, right? And be consistent about this. So um, we then taught you guys, okay, once you have those 100 leads, how to reach out to them. One, try to reach out to them in a variety of ways. You know, If you can reach out in a couple different ways, you're going to stand out way more effectively. You know, you have a way higher response rate and you have a better chance of communicating with that seller in, in their preferred method of communication. So, um, you know, if you're able to reach out with a, you know, Matthew talked about a text or there's, you can call, you can send emails, you can door knock or leave flyers on the door. You can, um, you know, send direct mail. You've got all these different options that we showed you guys. Um, so if you're able to kind of do a variety of those things, a mix of them, um, at least a couple different strategies, and then also do an active and a passive strategy. So an active strategy, meaning one-to-one -one outreach, that would be the, the call, text, door knock, that, that stuff that, that isn't easy to scale per se or automate, and then combine that with your automation with, for example, sending direct mail and, you know, hit start mail on that lead and just let them, the postcard show up at their door without you having to touch anything else. That's the winning formula where you're actively reaching out to them, actively building relationships, and then also staying top of mind long term where you're consistently staying in front of them using direct mail and things like that. That was kind of the, the two pronged approach that we talked about last time to really be able to, to give yourself a great chance just statistically of being the one that gets a conversation with them when they are ready to sell. So what it looked like again inside the deal machine app, you know, once you had that list of 100 leads, we clicked over to the leads tab, right? And we showed you guys, there's a couple different options. One, you can drive a list. So um, like like Eddie was talking about there, um, you can jump in and you're able to, to go in and kind of do, uh, you know, kind of that reverse D for D, you know, where you're you're pulling a list of properties and you open that up and you can hit, for example, um, uh, where is it here? Uh, select all and then lead actions and drive this list, right? Um, you also can do that from a standpoint of in the mobile app as well. You can hit drive for leads in the bottom left corner. And then, you know, one of the options that pops up is planned route or drive from a list. Either one will work for you. Um, that's a pro feature. So if you want to do that, make sure you're on Deal Machine Pro. And it's going to give you turn by turn navigation to every single lead on that list. So um, that's our goal right there is to help you get out there and, uh, you know, just be efficient with your door knocking, be efficient with any kind of in-person touch point by, by driving a list that way. We also showed you guys uh, cold calling, right? So you've got your, your dialer already set up, ready to go. You just click that call button and it'll start to make that call where it mirrors the area code and, and pulls up our AI powered dialer where it transcribes the call. It gives you suggestions in the call, kind of coaches you through the call in real time based on where you're at in the conversation and then even gives you a suggested next step with an automatic follow-up reminder from it. So we walked through all of that last time. Um, the phone numbers and emails are already included in your deal machine account as we talked about here, which, uh, you know, hopefully that saves you up to, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. Be, like for example, here, I've got 14,000 leads. Normally that would cost me 1500 bucks or more to skip trace that entire list. And now you've got the phone numbers ready to work with. And, and Matthew, that's awesome to hear how, how accurate they've been for you. Like I, you know, that's, uh, we've been getting that feedback a lot. So, uh, we really, really focus on, on accuracy there for you guys. Um, you know, you not only have the phone numbers, but when you click on a property, you can see things around the, the property owner. You can see things around, um, the, uh, the property data right here, you know, in terms of characteristics and tax information, um, you know, uh, transaction history, lien data, all kinds of different stuff. So you can go in knowing who you're talking to and what the property is going through before you even call. So you've got all that due diligence right there for you. And that way you can come in ready to have a great conversation, kind of knowing, hey, here, here are problems I can potentially solve for them and try to help have that conversation with them. And so, you know, Kim had mentioned like, hey, how do you talk to a seller, right? How do you how do you actually have that conversation? That's something that I think, one, coming in, 
doing your research, coming in, doing some due diligence. So, you know, like, Hey, if I click on a lead, I know this is a senior owner. Um, this is a kind of adjustable loan, right? So that, that, you know, I could present different situations, you know, I can click on that owner and see like, Oh, do they own any other properties? Right. Like, you know, and, uh, tell me more about that person. Hey, this is a, um, they've got a home business or a business owner themselves. So they own you know other businesses besides this. So you can just kind of do a little bit of digging here to really come in again, ready to ask great questions, ready to know, Hey, they've got a second mortgage on this property. Like you can see a variety of things there. So that way you, you know, you, you're coming in like prepared to ask great questions. And in general, there's kind of four main pillars. We try to teach people on questions to ask. There's the, it's really the acronym is M C T P M being motivation. So asking questions around why they're looking to sell and why aren't they lit current? You know, why don't they want to list it? And, and, you know, things like that. Like I would really address that head on, especially like, Hey, why aren't you going the retail route? Why aren't you just listing the property? That will, it can be scary to ask that question, but it will really uncover like, here's the real motivation behind a lot of this. Um, the, the C is condition. So what's, you know, has there been any updating recently? What's the condition of the property? What would you improve to it? If uh, you know, have you done any work on it in the last five years, things like that. Um, the T is on timeline. So when are you looking to sell? What needs to happen before you sell? Um, you know, what, uh, even like who are all the decision makers, right? When do they need to be involved? Like, are you, uh, when are you looking to, to move? Like, what is your next plan after you move or after you sell? So kind of the timeline, the, the whole context around that. And then finally price and getting to that, that, that asking price of, Hey, what, you know, what would it take for you to be able to move on from this property? Like really kind of addressing that head on. And you will see a lot of people, especially if you're like cold calling, for example, they might right away say, well, what do you offer me? Like, give me, give me a number. And uh, they might push towards that, you know, earlier on, you'll get, you'll at least run into some people who do that. Um, I always try to back it off and say, Hey, you know what? I'd love to give you a, a fair offer here, but we need to learn a little bit more about the property before I can do that. And, and so that way you can kind of talk through the rest of that process, uncover the real motivations. And a lot of times, if you go through that and you build a great relationship great relationship with them, build some trust with them, really get them to open up by asking good questions and just listening and being open mind, being a, a asking those open-ended questions, right? And trying to focus on solving their problem. By the end of the, the discussion, price sometimes isn't even necessarily the main driver. So, you know, it's, uh, so I, I would highly recommend going through those other pillars before you get to that pricing pillar. So um, that's something like going into the conversation, whether it be that initial conversation and or the appointment itself, um, I always dig into those kind of four main pillars there, but, um, Kim, do you, uh, I, I love, uh, the notes that you're taking there. Do you have any, any other tips on, on those kind of, uh, uh, you know, pillars and whatnot? Well, one of the things I always like to open with is just setting back and, you know, having a little bit of rapport building at the beginning, just so that we can decide that we'll, we'll talk to each other, but then tell me about your situation. And if they're a motivated seller, they will tell you everything you need to know most of the time that you, I mean, they'll tell you way more than you would ever need to know their social security number, their mortgage bank account. They will tell you everything if they're motivated. Um, the other thing is don't prejudge what the seller will do. Because I've had, as a seller, multiple realtors look at my listing and say, your price too high. And I'm like, okay, make me an offer. And they won't. Because, God forbid, they made me an offer 20000 less than my list price. Well, I listed it having no idea what the house is worth. So I threw it out there. Make me an offer. Yeah. And people won't do that. So... It, it, even if they want, uh, we had a house, it was a, a bank owned house. They had it listed for, I think 500,000. It was a, a high end house. And and the investor came in with a $400,000 offer. They counter offered them really high. The, the investor stood on their price and the investor got their price. And that was a bank. So these sellers will do a, a lot of things you don't think they will. So don't prejudge what they're they're willing to do. That's a great tip. Yeah. Especially around price. Yeah. Like always, always make that offer. See where, you know, see where you're at. Um, 
you know, I, I know the the goal with the direct marketing like that is to be able to have those initial conversations and kind of qualify. And no matter what the offer or whatever number they threw out there, I would always recommend booking the appointment if you're going to you know go in person like that, because, you know, that's when you have a real chance to dig in on all this stuff and really build a relationship and really get to that 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 reasonable price. You know, people can can change a lot within that. So, um Yeah, the you only know, time we don't go look is if we just don't like the house. We look at it and it's next to a gas station. Well, we don't want to buy a house next to a gas station, so we don't go look at those. But otherwise, if it's if we look at it on Google and we're like, oh, we love that house, it doesn't matter what the price is, we're going to go look at it because we might be able to solve the problem. And because we're realtors, we can always solve the problem if they're willing to let us. So mm -hmm. there we go. Love it. Um, so you've got all that in your disposal there. We also mentioned the, the direct mail too. So if you go into that mail tab and, you know, design your own postcards, you can create, use one of our default templates or create your own. Um, I will point out on the default templates, you've got ones that are kind of investor focused and ones that are actually agent focused too. So you've got a couple different angles you can work there. Um, and again, you can create your own from scratch if you want as well. It's kind of like a little mini Photoshop uh, designer inside of, of Deal Machine there. So you've got all that where you can create templates of various sizes, ha even handwritten letters, ballpoint letters that you can send one off as well. Um, they look just like this. And so you've got all that inside Deal Machine too. And that's where you can go in, create a sequence of these things, and then just set it and forget it and click, you know, send mail. And uh, when you start sending out that mail, it's going to be, you know, you can, that's the automation right there, the power of, of you know, basically generating leads in your sleep, where you can hit start mail and then choose how often you want the postcard to be sending to them, you know, what, in what order and, uh, and really just set it all up. So that way one click and you don't have to worry about it at all at, the, at that point, just, you know, wait for the, wait for the calls to come in long-term from that. So Um, and for those of you looking at ballpoint marketing, you can't get one-offs unless you're going through yes. Deal Machine. I learned that because I'm like, I want one-offs. And they're like, well, you have to go through Deal Machine because we don't sell them one-off to anybody else. The only way to do it. Yeah. They, they, I think it's like 500 minimum uh, if, if you don't yeah. go go through us. So any other questions, guys, when it comes to marketing, having the... So, so Brooke, the, uh, the call piece in terms of follow-up right here, um, you have a follow-up uh cadence that you can pre-program into deal machine so if you go into your into your account click on the dial the uh profile top right corner go to your application settings and then dialer settings right here there's a little follow-up button and that follow-up right there is going to show you things like hey if they don't answer remind me in 30 days to call them back or hey if they are a warm lead they say someday i'll sell it'll automatically remind you in 14 days so Whenever you're saying like, hey, uh, if the lead, if I call the system said, if the lead called the number back, oh, I get what you're saying here in the free trial period. Yeah, the, well, it call her oh, back oh, if she's on the free trial, but if she pays, it'll call back forever. Yeah, so basically with it, you have a 14 day guaranteed window. Um, after that, numbers can be recycled. I will, I'll say it's usually much, much longer than that before they're recycled. Um, also, uh, statistically, after 14 days, your odds of getting a callback are extremely low. Um, so I would say, you know, in general, like uh, they're assigned to you until they were assigned to a different lead inside Deal Machine. So it usually takes much longer. And once 14 days are up, I highly recommend calling them back again anyway. Um, because, uh, again, your odds are very low that they'll call that number back at that point. So, um, hopefully that answers your question. I, I misunderstood it at first. So that's, a uh, uh, thanks for the clarification there. Um, awesome. Cool. So, uh, yeah, no problem, Brooke. Uh, so in terms of the new stuff as well, let's go back here. Cool. Now, like I mentioned, final step here, closing deals with confidence. So, We've got three separate tools I do want to touch on here for a few minutes each. Um, really, the goal here is, again, the and I know I've, we've talked about this, but really kind of the fortune is in the follow-up. If you're able to stay organized, to stay on top of you know, top of people's minds, build that relationship long-term, and be, be there when they are ready to sell, um, that, I mean, that's a winning formula that the vast majority of people do not pull off very well. Um, I will say that entire process as well. It's something that requires uh, you to be organized and you to be consistent in your follow-up and you to be really focused on on um, 
on how to stay uh, top of mind with people by always making sure you have that next step in place with them. And so inside Deal Machine, we've kind of got a light CRM to help you with that, where you can go back into the software and any individual lead you're working, when you click on that property, you'll see there is an activity button right here. And when you click on activity, you've got then notes and tasks that you can add right here. So anytime that you make a phone call, all your notes automatically get transcribed and added. Um, if you call outside of the deal machine, you can add a note and, and type whatever you'd like and attach files and things. But the task manager is probably the most useful portion where you can click on a task and say they said, uh, you know, say they said, hey, come by for an appointment tomorrow at 4 p.m. Great appointment at 4 p.m. tomorrow. I book that you know, create that task. And now when I wake up every single morning, jump in deal machine and see, Hey, here's, here's what I need to do today. Like there's a little task manager, this top right corner, that little uh, uh, notification button to make sure that every single lead you're working with, you've always got that ne next task lined up, ready to be able to tackle. So you've got that there. You've got this little follow-up reminder too, where if you click on this, can, is the, is the weather getting rough, Kim? <laughs> I see you keep looking out there, but uh, you, you click on uh, this follow up reminder and you can scroll down and see like, oh, I need to call this person, this person, this person. So you've got all of that ready to go for you to be able to follow up and, and make sure you stay again, top of mind at the right time. <laughs> no, no, worries, no worries, Kim. Uh, so you've got the task manager. You've got that follow up button right there. Um, that's all going to really separate you from the competition. If you can stay organized using kind of the light CRM and using those follow up reminders. Now, um, as you go through, when you actually talk to that individual and you get to that 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 number of like, hey, what is it worth? Like, what is my max allowable offer? A uh, couple things. One, knowing the ARV, the after repair value, is extremely important, right? It's knowing what what is that? How do I comp this property? Find comparable properties that that recently sold and therefore value this property of what it looks like when it's all fixed up and and after repairs. And what is the market value of that getting right now? And so when you click on any property inside Deal Machine, you know, you'll know you notice we had that, you know, we covered mail, info, activity. There's a little comps button right here. And that comes with every single Deal Machine, whether it's on mobile or desktop. You click on comps. And again, like I mentioned, we've got MLS data in here, right? You can go in and you can actually filter your comps. So you can go in and say, hey, show me properties and let me go to the settings, show me properties that are on the you know, MLS data. Um, that's always going to be more up to date than County records, uh, date range. Uh, let's tighten it up to three months. See what we get here. Uh, square footage range. I usually recommend plus or minus 15%. Same thing with year built plus or minus 15 years. So it's relatively the same size, same architecture and build same style. And then, you know, default range. We, we, we can do half a mile right here confirm that. And, you know, you can always do bed and bath and everything down here too. And now I've got 11 comps that fit that, that particular criteria. Now let me go in even further and use the draw tool. So I've got this little, little, uh, um, uh, pencil right here that, it, that I know like, Hey, if I want to stay on this side of Christy, let me go in and draw around this particular area. So now I know this is getting even more specific, more exact, and now I'm down to eight comps. And I can really go through and make sure that you know each individual property is a true comp to the one I'm looking at and use this to be able to come up with what is that, that dollar per square footage in that area, right? And, and project that onto you know, what this property is worth. And so going through your kind of comping uh, process, coming up with that after repair value using the mobile app or the desktop version, you know, we want to make that as super streamlined and easy for you as possible inside Deal Machine. And that way you can then kind of work it backwards and say, okay, great. Now, if I know based on the comps what the ARV is, you know, then plug that into your 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 offer formula, right? To, to, to what you're going to actually offer here. Um, what I'll mention in addition to that is to work that formula, for example, if you're on Deal Machine Pro, like we've been talking about here, you have one other tool that I want to make sure to touch on here before the giveaway. And that's when you click into any individual property, there's a little uh, purple, you know, let me find a better example here. Uh, oh, these are all commercial. Let me find one that's residential here. Okay, here we go. You've got a little uh, uh, purple circle down here, right? You click on that and similar to the dialer, 
you've got Alma, the AI assistant, built into the property card as well. And what this AI chat is really good at, two things. One, you've got uh, how to talk to sellers. So you can come in and say like, hey, help me write an SMS message or, you know, help me write buy more. You know, you can, you can come in here and kind of use it, um, you know, uh, as a, as a little kind of you know, wordsmith and messaging, uh, you know, chat bot here, but it's, what it's using is, is chat GPT mixed with all this off-market property data and all of our prompting too. So it's really just kind of like a real estate hyper specific and focused specialized version of chat GPT. Um, so you've got all of that right here. And then in addition to that, it also has deal analysis built in. So you can come in here and say, Hey, you know, I already know the ARV. Well, great. Let me go in and if I I can either type in the bottom or click on the preset prompts and say like, hey, calculate the offer price for me. I want to, you know, wholesale it or, you know, whatever whatever the exit strategy is. It'll break that down for you right there and basically say, here's the max allowable offer based on the ARV, based on what what margin you want, based on uh, you know, the the rehab costs. Um you can come in here and say, "Hey, um I think the rehab uh, is 30K instead, uh, cost is 30K. And it'll come in and, okay, cool, let me redo that for you. So you can go in and basically use that to, to be your, your assistant inside the Deal Machine app, um, in addition to the comping tool, and really just, again, have kind of this uh, analysis for you with just a couple clicks. So um, all of that combined are ways, again, to come to that confident offer, use data to, to do so, and then stay top of mind with your follow-ups until you, you know, close the deal. So, um, I know, I know it coming that up one. with a repair cost. Good question. So the re repair cost, that's probably the one piece that I would recommend really doing your own math as well, but, um, it is a pretty awesome kind of initial formula. Essentially it's using the dollar per square footage cost of the area. And you know, what's, what's uh, projected for, for general rehab, it's using a uh, building condition data right here. So, um, we do have building condition codes that, you know, we've, uh, are piping in data from, a, a you know, a, a, I know counties are involved and Dan could answer that question on exactly how we get all the building condition stuff. And then, um, we're multiplying it by the size of the property as well. So the rehab cost is basically like, Hey, how much does it cost to fix a property in that area based on the condition and then the size of the property? So, so. The, the tax appraiser kind of guesses what the condition is, and that's probably where it's coming from. Yeah. Yep. That's roughly it there too. Okay. Um, let's see. Here. If they actually do the appraisal, they don't do that in Jackson County. They just make things up. <laughs> <laughs> it, counties can be definitely messy in how they're, you know, you know, categorizing and collecting data and things. So, you know, in the end, it's about like, hey, how do you uh, how do you build real relationships with the seller? And, and you know, we want to give you as much data as possible to to digest it and take action. But the, the real thing across the board that's going to make you successful is, is taking that action consistently and and getting out there and, and again, talking to more and more sellers and, and giving yourself opportunities at bats here. So um, there we go, guys. Any other questions on. The follow-up stuff, the CRM, the comping, making offers, the AI assistant, any of those tools to help you here? You know, I, I know we're, I want to be able to get to that giveaway here soon. Uh, I was looking at your pricing structure mm -hmm. and it's talking about litigator scrub. And I just was wondering, so you're running it against the do not call list. Yep. Are you running it against known people that are suing people? Yeah. So we actually have a known litigators list that's uh, piped in here too. So um, you can't filter by that, but it is included in the data. So we're, we're moving that from you. So that way you're not calling people who we know are litigators. <laughs> um, okay. So, yep, that's built in as well. Um, awesome. Any other uh, urgent questions, guys, before we get to the the uh the fun stuff here <laughs> i did have one question it's not urgent but i was just curious um if it was kind of what what i've gotten to know about using direct mail i do a lot of direct mail i like it that's why i started sending out a deal machine have you found that the highest returns come between the third to fifth um postcard that you send is that what you guys run into as well yeah it's for sure um yeah it's for sure multiple i know for statistically it's it's anything above that third one is really where you're going to get much much yep. more 
in terms of callbacks and things like that. So um, I don't know if like the fifth one per se is when you, when you would necessarily need to, need to stop or anything, but if you, you, know, you obviously want to want to budget as well. So it's like, Hey, yeah, if you, you know, uh, if you can't, you know, if you're not wanting to afford or not wanting to, to send one every single month for a year or two, right. Then, then, Hey, maybe spread them out a little bit. Um, weekly postcards, I would say that probably is too much. I, I actually recommend um, every once a month, roughly. But if you want to get even more specific, once either once every three weeks or once every five weeks, because then it staggers when during the month they're getting that that postcard. Um, and so that way, if you just get unlucky and it's coming with like monthly bills and things, you'll avoid that because it's going to change when each month you're, they're getting the postcard. So, um, yeah, I, I think weekly would be a little a little too much, especially considering like. The post office, you know, it's going to, they're, they're not always they might like, get them all at once. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It might, it might like, you know, not as, be as organized as you would hope. It can't be as exact that way. So, um, but I, it also depends on the, the, if you're just doing your driving for dollars, that's one thing. But if you're stacking motivation and you have specific types of motivation, you might mail more often or less often. True. Depending on so, like if you're if you're re dealing with say somebody that's in foreclosure in Kansas City in in Missouri that has 21 days between the notice and foreclosure in theory, you might mail them more often, but you're probably not going to be mailing them a postcard either. Right. Yeah. Like some of them are going to be more urgent, like you said. So it's going to be uh, take a little more aggressive outreach, um, just depending upon the situation and the problem you're solving. So yeah, that's a that's a really good thing to point out. All right, guys. Um, well, before we get to the giveaway, one last reminder. Um, and let's see, I had one more in the chat. Uh, oh, uh, submitting the homework. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, I'll say, you know, the homework that you guys did here, um, again, you can complete that with Deal Machine. You know, we can use that uh, seven-day free trial with the unlimited free skip tracing and, con you know, the contact info, right? You know, in addition to that, you've got the office hours. So Kim had talked about it. Hey, we're live, you know, four days a week. Uh, we're live uh, even tomorrow at, uh, you know, 11 a.m. Eastern time. So Ryan's going to be on there. Uh, you, you get a good crowd on there for pretty much every single one of those. So whether you have a specific question you want to answer live and not in just the support chat, or you just want to learn and can continue to pick up pro tips and continue to get better and better at this. I'd recommend joining and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, checking out the group. So um, bookmark that link. Make sure you guys have that uh, at your disposal. Um, I do want to say before we get to the giveaway, one last message here. You guys may have completed the homework and you may not have. Like it, it was it was it was not easy. It was a challenge for a reason. Like we gave you guys hard deadlines. We helped you. We, we were really uh, giving you big goals. Like we, we had a very specific reason why we wanted to get you to that hundred, hundred leads. You know, you're a, on a path to success when you do that. And not only did you add leads, but you did the hard part of reaching out. And I mean, we had people, you know, Ma Matthew right there, like 21 opportunities from that. That's amazing. Like, I love to see, that's why we do it guys. That's, we love to see those success stories. Um, but even if you aren't there yet, if you're just getting started, you you're you're in a much 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 better position than you were seven days ago, right? Like you've gone through this training, you know, you have the knowledge now, you have the playbook, you have the tool, you've got everything to just go out there and, and make things happen. So I just want to celebrate you guys for taking action, for showing up, for you know the handful that did the homework. Awesome job! Like we had a great homework completion rate. You know, I know again we made it hard, and uh, it's it's great for, to see you guys that are committed there. So. Um, Kim, do you have any other advice on like where they should go from here in terms of, you know, these great, these seven great days? Like, how do we make this last way longer than just seven days? <laughs> well, uh, first of all, if you haven't done the homework, go do it um, because it does work. I I've learned you just do what the th guy on the, on the screen tells you to do. It works just like they say it, do it, just say it does. So go do it. Um, and, and those of you that have done it, do it again. So I, I'm pretty sure everybody that got the the good results are probably in there doing it again tomorrow and the next day. And the guys, the guys and gals that get out there and do it, they're going to be doing deals. And those that are finding a life gets in the way all the time and having excuses, they're not going to get there until they do it. So, yep. So use this as a launching pad, like you said there, Kim. Of of hey, you've got got it, the 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 steps to take. 
build that consistency in, find a way to make it happen, build it into your, into your routine like that. And, you know, when you have good habits like that and you keep doing it over and over, like you are going to get better and better and better at this and, you know, put in the reps to be able to just statistically, it's, it's not, if you're going to do deals, it's when you're going to do deals. It's just a matter of getting, the, you know, enough no's to get to that. Yes. So uh, yeah, our new way of war <laughs> Matthew said is our absolutely our new way of warming up leads. That's awesome. I love it. So fantastic guys. Well, Finally, time here. Um, I'll, I'll try to stick around and answer any final questions you guys have here too. But I do want to give away a huge prize. So it's going to be worth again over was it twenty five hundred bucks? Right, big, 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 big prize here. Tonight's winner. What they're going to get first thing is an entire year of Deal Machine Pro. So Deal Machine Pro is everything unlocked. All of the the, uh, the the main features you need, you've got everything that comes to the driving for dollars, the the uh, planned route mode, the list building, all that's built in. You've got you know all of our advanced mail features. You've got up to fifty thousand leads you can add to Deal Machine. You've got um, all you know uh, direct mail, lower prices unlocked. You've got um, all the skip tracing comes in included for free with those fifty thousand leads. I mean that would normally be five six grand right there. Uh, to, to pay for, for phone numbers and emails. You've got that all included for a year, all free. And then you've got uh, on you know the tools that I just showed you, you've got the AI tool for analysis, the MLS tool, the little C light CRM, the dialer, everything unlocked right there for you guys free. Um, I'll introduce you to our head of uh, customer success. He's happy to help you guys make sure you're successful too. So you'll kind of get that, that, that white gloves, uh, you know, service right there. And then on top of all that, you're going to get an additional hundred dollars free of postcards and calling minutes all unlocked for you right there. So um, that is a massive value. You had to, again, turn in the homework and be on live. So you had to have put in the work and then be on live tonight to win this thing. So, um, you know, if I love to see, uh, here we go. Uh, they've got people in, in the chat ready to go, ready to win this thing. Let me pull up the list of people who turned in the homework and I'll put it in our uh, wheel uh, wheel of names right here to to show off uh, uh, a winner. So, um, Kim, can you do you, can you monitor the chat? If there's any other, if there's any questions, yeah. there's only minute for me. Uh, but if there's any other last minute questions, I'm happy to answer that while I'm pulling this up here too. Let's see, guys. Got this pulled up. All right, here. Fantastic. A couple of you are our email addresses. So I'll, I'll verify if it was an email address that wins, I'll verify who that is. Make sure they're on here. But, uh, Kim, any questions that popped up? Are we good? Everybody's just, we're waiting with bated All breath. Right. Guys, if you, if you think you're going to win, put that in the chat. Here we go. <laughs> Love it. Uh, so I see we got Eddie on here, Matthew Brooke. Uh, we got quite a few people that did the homework. So awesome. Um, now let's see here. I don't see any questions in the chat. Well, Kim, if you can give me a little drum roll here, please. Let's go, guys. Here we go. Let's see the winner of entire year of Deal Machine Pro with the service, with the extra marketing credits. Tick, tick, tick. Tick. D Smith Ria. Is that is it Desmona or hold on? Let me double check. D. Smith Rhea. Are they I on? I believe so. Is that you, Desdemona? Yes, it's me. Here we go. Hey, hey. awesome. Desmona, congratulations. Awesome. Love, love to see that. Way to put in the work. Um, are you in a spot where you can unmute? I love to hear. Uh <laughs> uh, love to hear any your experience at all. Um, and I, I think you were on the master class today, weren't you? Right? That was <laughs> class today too um yeah yes, trying to learn how to use this thing more uh fully for everything that i'm doing like for all the properties whether it's for wholesaling driving for dollars whatever the case just to be able to keep like even the notes and stuff in one place so i'm trying to learn how to fully optimize so um including having team members um mm -hmm. so um yeah. i have one that already like i can't afford the software but i still want to do so I, I really appreciate this prize. 
Amazing. I mean, you earned it. You put in the hard work. You did. You turned in the, the homework and everything. And again, uh, I will make sure right after this, I'll, I'll introduce you to my team. Make make sure you get all hooked up. But yeah, now you've got a year to to to, to go do this, to uh, figure it out, to get you know get the best practices in. And now you're basically obligated to do deals at this point. So <laughs> uh, please keep us updated on when you do that first one. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, fantastic, guys. Well, uh, Kim, great. We do have some questions, though, that are yes. coming in. Uh, Matt is asking, can we get an API to integrate our leads with other uh, with other apps like Go High Level or some yep. other fully functional high level CRM? Yes. So absolutely. Um, if you go inside Deal Machine, we have uh, API documentation um, to be able to, to kind of, if you're more technical, we've got open API to work with. We have a Zapier integration too, if that's easier. So um, let me pull up inside the app where to find that. Um, let's see, I believe that's under, is that application? Here we go, yep. So here, I'll show you guys. If you go in your Deal Machine account, let me share my screen here again, if I can find it. Too many things going on. <laughs> uh, here we go. So inside your deal machine account, you click on your profile, you go to your application settings, and then API right here. So that's gonna give you uh, kind of documentation, the API key right here. Um, and then again, you know, we've got Zapier, Z-A-P-I-E-R.com um, for, for people who prefer that. So you've got a couple ways to kind of transfer data in and out. And my question would be, at seeing who your partners are on your list, does this integrate at all with a call porter? Uh, having mm -hmm. them do, uh, like, if, you, if they call back, having them take the call back and talk to the seller? Absolutely. That's something we team up with them. I mean, we have ballpoint marketing, as you mentioned, call Porter, same owners. Um, we team up with them all the time. In my own personal business, we uh, call with Deal Machine and, you know, use mail and all that stuff. But then uh, we have call Porter answer our calls because I'm, you know, I'm, uh, you know, do, doing the day job and, and uh, you know, call Porter is kind of my inbound receptionist, essentially. Um, and then I take the conversation from there. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. I Vince who uh, helps run their uh, the uh, call porter marketing and things like that. Um, we do deals together here in St. Louis. So if, if anyone wants an intro to call porter, I'm Kim, you know, him uh, as well, or, or me. Or, I, yeah. I have a button for him. <laughs> nice. There we go. Perfect. So uh, absolutely. We, we team up all the time with them. Okay, cool. And uh, if you're looking for direct mail tips, like how to send direct mail and what, what it should say, we have a lovely webinar with, uh, ballpoint marketing on how they do a lot of their marketing, not necessarily their particular letters, but how they market to different kinds of lists. So I have that as well. So great. Help you figure out what you want to send, which, which postcard looks better. There we go. Love it. All right. Well, cool. I have congratulations to our winner. Yeah. No kidding. Awesome job guys. Yeah. Uh, congratulations to Matt and getting all the leads and I'm going to hopefully see everybody else has all these leads when they actually cross that, do all the work. So. Yep. There we go. So and you saw it works right there, guys. Love to see, uh, uh, you know, the progress we made in just a couple of days and seven days. And, um, you know, again, don't use this as a, as like a, a oh, someday I'll, I'll do this. Like I'll use this as a chance to really take action, really get out there do a great job to end the year and you're going to go into 2025 strong and, and be ready to go and, and uh, you know, have a, have a, a great rest of the year when a lot, again, a lot of people are mailing it in right now. Like now is the time you can step up and really stand out.